It's funny how he must have written his name in Cyrillic. That's why we don't see the name appearing next to the Filia Master title. Right. The Filia Master... That is... <laughs> the I... player of the Volga Stormbringers writing his name in Cyrillic. Yep. I, I don't even know... Um... I wasn't even going to touch that one or pretend to try to pronounce it, so yeah. <laughs> well, this will no, be... it's just, it, we can't read it, it doesn't appear, so it's not even Cyrillic, but I'm, I assume he wrote it in Cyrillic originally, that's why right. we can't see the... I thought it was just a fashion statement. Maybe he's, you know, he wants it to look that way, so... And day two begins here in our second week of the 2019 season of the Pro Chess League. Making her Pro Chess League debut is the one, the only international master, Anna Runoff, joining us live from the Tata Steel Studios on their rest day. Anna, we're so excited to have you, and I hope that you're excited to cover the, the Eastern Division today as uh, Tata Steel takes a break. I'm so thrilled to be back, Danny. And yes, this is the playing hall, the famous playing hall of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament, one of the longest tournaments in the world. Tradition versus the future of the, chess. I feel like I'm sitting in this. You're history. literally representing the, the tradition and the future right there. So uh, it's, it's great to have you. And, and let's dive into what we're about to cover here today for those of you that are with us early and already active in the Twitch tv slash chess chat and chess.com tv thanks for being here Anna and i are going to go through the matchup starting with right there at the top as you saw in the standings we have the armenia eagles taking on the mumbai movers of course you see a, a who's who's list of just huge names free agent acquisition by the eagles this year parham magsudlu is actually playing in the b group there in tata steel so he's using his rest day wisely Anna. uh how do you expect the eagles to do this year now that they've attracted the the current world junior champion and iranian rising star there on board one i think they are very ambitious to defend their title they also have sponsorship from a chess app and also an armenian bank so i think they are there to fight and defend their title um also I think the Mumbai Movers, as we were discussing it with Danny in the setup, the Mumbai Movers have something to pay back for the Armenia right. Eagles. Yep. They're knocked out by the Armenia Eagles in the last season. So the, the 
I think for the Mumbai movers today, they should be even more motivated to score. No, it's a great and... point. And for those who didn't follow the 2018 season as closely as they should have, the Eagles eliminated the movers in tie-break fashion, meaning it was actually tied 8-8 in the playoffs. And because they were the top seed heading into the playoffs, it really paid huge dividends. So another reason why every one of these matchups throughout the entire regular season matters. To quickly mention uh, the, the other matches, you saw the Estonia Horses will also be taking on the Delhi Dynamite, who are bringing some powerhouses today we'll talk about. But on to Moskva, where we see the two uh, new teams there, also just you know stacked with lineups today. Andrekin, the, uh, the well-known name who mostly is always representing the Volga Stormbringers on board one. He'll be trying to fight off a very, very strong lineup from the Moscow Phoenix, but but then you also have the Tbilisi Gentlemen versus the Moscow Wizards. I look at Bador Jabava on board one, very underrated at 26-34, but then you look at Vlad Dubrov on board three, and how is he even in the league at 24-78 when we know just how good that is? He could be board one for a lot of teams. So the games are underway. We're going to get into the action here right after we remind everybody they can get involved in Fantasy Chess. If you haven't filled out your bracket, uh, it's time to start doing that. Type in the command uh, exclamation point fantasy in the Twitch chat. Get involved. Take $10,000 directly from Greg Shahadi's pocket. He's looking to pay somebody. But uh, Ana and I have games to start covering here as the first match of the of the day is underway here between the Delhi Dynamite and the Estonia Horses. So... Anna, if you see an exciting game, you know the drill, right? It's the first time we've done the Pro Chess League together uh, this this year, but last year we had the call many times, and as we as we go through the games, if you see one you want to jump to, we can, but I've currently got Sahaj Grover versus Jan Elvis. That is Sahaj Grover versus Malev 12 on the board. As uh, mm -hmm. Elvis is kind of a staple of the Estonia horses. When he when he performs well, the horses tend to do well, and, and uh, that's why I've got that game up here to start. Yeah, that's really true. Alves has always been one of the top scorers among the horses. He has played every single year for the horses, one of the most active uh, members of the Pro Chess League. And Sahai Grover, a young Indian grandmaster, not an easy opponent for the first round for these two. Um, as far as the opening, this is the Pierce defense, and we saw it here in Tata Steel. In the first round, Anish Giri lost in this mm -hmm. exact same opening against Yanya Pomyashchi in just 26 moves. So this opening with the black pieces does have some web, some venom it, it does and i was actually going to mention that game but since you're there covering the event live uh you, you beat me to it and uh let's let's talk quickly about the other games underway because we will be bouncing around uh gm hari krishna is making his pro chess league debut uh against uh, bullet timo that is of course uh women's international master my narva right here and and she uh, she's also making her debut, but Hari Krishna is going to be relied upon, I think, this year for the Dynamite, especially if they want to rebound from their their first week loss. Uh, so they're mm -hmm. they're going with the big guns here this week. And Hari, normally the kind of guy playing in Tata Steel, not playing there this year, but um, should be should be looking to help the Dynamite today. Yeah, it's strange indeed that Hari Krishna is not playing this year. Vidit is here, who would normally play for the Mumbai Movers. We're going to talk about that later on. And the opening here between board four of the horses and the top board of the Dynamite was an Alapin with a different move order. So Knight F3 in the second move and C3 on the third, but it mm -hmm. does transpose into a standard Alapin position. How do you like these positions, Danny and White? I, I, well, I tend to prefer these positions as black. I guess I'm biased toward toward the uh, the Sicilian in a lot of ways. And uh, Anna mentioned the Alapin. That is defined as the move C3, everybody, where White wants to play D4 and capture back with a pawn instead of the normal mm -hmm. open Sicilian where you're taking with a, a minor piece on D4. So to give the, the quick brief description of what the Alapin is, that's kind of the goal. Uh, but Hari is playing one of the more aggressive lines for, for Black to immediately try to undermine the center with D6 to say, I know you have two pawns in the center, but I don't want it to stay that way. And we see that uh, we're already having some exchanges in the center here. Black equalizes in these lines relatively quickly, but I think it's one of those systems where White knows that Black can equalize on it, but if, but if White knows the positions well, they can still get positions they're comfortable with. And sometimes in rapid chess, we say that a lot, right? Your, your ability to have a position you're confident and that you know the plans with less time on the clock is sometimes more important than whether it's objectively the most challenging variation of, of a line. Yeah, that is so true. And here we see such a big difference also in rating that Black yep. has to try to play for a win no matter what. So right. equalizing is not, not a goal for Harry Krishna in this game. That's a great point. 
Let's go to the game here between ABG Gupta and Ottomar Ladva. Uh, this one seems to be moving along relatively quickly. That's ABG Gupta versus Og Sir. Um, I don't, let's let's back this thing up because I actually I was just gonna try to figure out what was the opening here. And uh, yeah, then I was also on my dev and I looked at the position and I see move by move that it starts started in a very symmetrical way. It yeah. Started as a G3 Grunfeld type of position. Uh huh. And then this B3 C4 setup for white. It becomes a, a double Fianchetto ready hybrid, but Gupta not missing a beat here. If you look at the clock, they've already made. Uh, 15 moves on the board, but he st he still has almost 14 and a half minutes left, and clearly feels relatively confident as black. I think he'll be looking to strike with e5 on the next move after trading on f1. White's gonna win back the pawn on c4, I'm guessing, unless Ana is is Gupta gonna play b? Sure is he gonna play b5? Yeah, I, yeah. I thought he might have made a mistake because I think that black's position looks very promising after yeah. the capital b2 and bishop d3. Something went wrong for white already because now trade on f1 and then black can defend the form with b5. No, you're right. Just, In fact, I, I just, as I said that, I, I could have, you know, stumbling on my own words because I didn't even believe it. Normally, black would be playing for e5, everyone, in a structure like this where uh, in a Grunfeld, black can get e5 and equalize against white's two pawns in the center. But as Anna pointed out, I think knight takes d2 by white on move 13. Anna was just a blunder, or maybe even the whole idea of playing c4. With uh, without recognizing the potential consequences of of a5 and a4 coming by Gupta because b4, knight takes d2. If white had taken with the queen, the pawn would have been lost anyway, and taking yeah. with the knight failed to bishop d3. So, so actually Gupta just instantly kind of flexing his theoretic theoretical muscles here against Ladva knows this line better than him, and and black is just up a pawn. Yeah, this this is already quite a big advantage for black a protected fast pawn. And he plays c5. Look at that move. That's nice. Taking advantage of the pin on the long diagonal. I love this move. And if b takes c5, knight takes c5, the, the b to bishop is hanging in every single variation. Yep. No, that's brilliant, especially because when uh, white plays queen f3, the one weakness you start to look at in black's position is maybe the c6 pawn. It's backward, it's doubled. And uh, Gupta says not for long with a very nice. Taking advantage of the pin, shout out to our first uh, pin emote reference of the day in the Twitch chat. Anna is, is, is one of the best partners for me. I feel like you do a much better job of keeping track of the Twitch chat than I do generally. I'm going to be using my pin emote too. This is pin time, guys. Get your pin emotes out. You Use the pin, pin. emote. There we go. And shout out to everybody. There it is. Anna's leading the way. Bigfoot's right behind her. <laughs> All right, the other, only other game we haven't touched on yet. Let's go over to the game between Cesardry versus Meshkovs, that is first second versus three in 1997, or I guess three in 97. Um, Grandmaster Meshkovs with the black pieces for the horses. He also played, I believe, in, in week one, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, Cesardry is uh, making her debut. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, but we have uh, kind of an Italian structure here, a Rui Lopez with without a lot of D4 coming, and, and what are your thoughts about this position so far? Oh, it's just so popular nowadays, all these type of positions. But I like that the uh, board four player of the Dynamites went for H3, G4. That's, I think that's yeah. very ambitious. And she's a lower rated player, mesh cost 2,500, Grandmaster, strong opponent. And she's not, not afraid of him. I like the attitude. I love it. H3, yeah. G4. Who and knows what's going to happen? G5, he, she has just played. And this is kind of a principled idea. So it's a super aggressive one, as, as Anna's saying. But it's also... Just to provide a little bit of context for those viewers wondering, well, why can't I just play h3 and g4? Well, one, in the live position, note white has not castled yet. So that flexibility mm -hmm. the white maintained kept this option kind of in, in the back pocket. And you see ideas like this commonly, sometimes even in, in openings like the two knights, where white, white plays a position where you maintain some flexibility against a very popular bishop d6 line where white plays h3 with the idea of sort of sneakily jumping into a kingside attack. And so this idea of h3 is even even more common when black has already played h6 because the idea that on a highlighted of g4 and g5 is going to pry open uh, new, ver new, new avenues for things like the rook on the g file, the bishop on the c1 h6 diagonal. So uh, this actually makes a lot of sense for white. And the more I look at it, I agree with you. Not only does it feel like psychologically she's coming ready to play, right? Not intimidated by one of the top boards, but also... Um, 
also could be could be the right idea here. And I, I okay, so Meshkov plays h5, clearly going to try to play g6 next to keep it closed on it. But how does how does uh, Sashardri take advantage of this? Maybe now this now is the time for d4. I'm looking as a candidate move. Um, yeah, d4 is certainly one of the candidate moves. Or if she wants to continue on the king side, the knight h4 and ask this pawn what's going to happen to it. G6 would have been the response, I believe, to knight h4. So she goes for d4. Uh -huh. I think that's logical, as you have pointed it out, Danny. And, and I like d4 because I think that I think that one of the one of the issues now for Black is if you don't take on on d4, okay, White will White will just take on e5 and win a pawn, and so the capture here I think changes the structure enough that it's going to be hard for Black to just close things up with g6 with threats of e5 and d5 later on in positions, and so the right idea I think to make the center a little more open now that Black has committed this h5 move. Uh, so that, you know, because as, as we push pawns around our king side, things like h5 and g6, if it does get locked up, white's going to have to create some new avenues into squares like f6 and e5, and that's why opening the center, I think, was the right choice. So, um, yeah. Some behind-the-scenes information on this game, by the way, and the the Indian team uh, from Rakesh. Thank you, Rakesh, for the info. The Grandmaster Gupta and Woman International Master Srija are playing in the same room right now in Delhi, and David Yada is also on site, one of the most famous and best chess photographers out there. Awesome. The uh, next match has just gotten underway. We'll just quickly tell you that if you're interested in following uh, the Volga Stormbringers and the Moscow Phoenix, they are they are also making their first moves uh, you can use the command that we've now mentioned a few times. Use the command slash follow and then the hashtag PCL directly in the live chess server and you will be forever connected to all of these games so you don't have to sit there and worry and wonder, am I missing games anymore? Now it all happens at the touch of a button. And on that note, call to action to follow us on all of our social media portals, whether that's the Twitch channel here, the Twitter that is very active during these matches, the Facebook page, or if you're interested, get a backpack. They're kind of they're kind of cute. I like the backpack. I, I wear it I around the, the office. Backpack. I wear it in the office all the time. Yeah. Just walk yeah. around in the backpack. It just makes me feel good, warm and, warm and secure. So uh, I really need one. I really need to get one for myself. And also, of course, I'm, well, I'm interested in any kind of caps or hats. So I hope that chess.com relaunches many different kind of hats and caps as possible. And you you have a hat on right now. Do you want to show me what that hat is? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not a process league, but it's it's a nice one. I got it in Liverpool, and it's from the Beatles Museum. Well, we it's don't we don't have pro chess league hats, but in order just to try to keep pace with the the one and only Miss Hat Queen, I brought a few out. I got a few hats in the office. I got the chess.com hat, <laughs> the Dan Heisman trucker hat, in case I ever want to just you know hop on the road and stop at a bunch of gas stations. I got the trucker hat here. Um, oh, nice. I've got the uh, St. Louis hat. The last time I was ever invited to a chess tournament, that'll never happen again. <laughs> and then I've got the, the much... I'm not even invited. No, I'm just kidding. Of I've got the much coveted chess.com beanie because we actually don't make these, so I'm like the only one who has one of these, so that's oh. adorable. Um, but let's, let's pop it. back. Hare Krishna, as we said, is making his debut for the Dynamite and in need from my view to uh, to perform well but i'm looking at a, a live position where he's about to get upset by woman's international mm -hmm. master my narva who is just up a clean exchange in this game what in the world happened here let's let's Ooh. back up and find out yeah, let me go there as well what happened in this game so he played b6 on move 12 Anna. that's where we left it and we were talking about despite the fact that i think the black position was fine out of the opening alapin sicilian not a ton of bite but narva obviously knows the positions well she quickly plays bishop d3, and then queen e4, trying to bring the heat over here to the king side. And after g6, bishop h6, Hare Krishna played knight a5, queen e3, and bishop c5. So a whole bunch of tempo moves played by black. But after mm -hmm. queen f4, one note is that black could not take the bishop on d3 because of queen f6. And uh, g7 would be mate. Bishop takes f3, queen takes, rook to e8, and then bishop b5. It almost looks like Hari just trapped his own rook with all of these moves, Anna. Yeah, and uh, we were discussing that usually for black it's easy to equalize versus the Alapin, but it's not just that he did not equalize, he went completely wrong, yep. losing an exchange, and now my Narva is about to produce one of the biggest upsets of yep. the day potentially. No, it would be it would be a huge huge start to the match, and I, and I again it, these feel like self-inflicted wounds here. Looking back, that 
this whole idea with B6 and Hare Krishna playing very fast, but it, it would have been okay for Black. I think if on move 15, Black just plays rook e8 immediately and doesn't try to be so ambitious with the tempi. But um, in, in the end, after Black makes all these moves and trades off his light square bishop willingly, all he really did was give up critical control over the light squares and then lose the rook here because everybody rook e7 would have failed to queen f6 and, and worse things happening on g7. So, all right, well, there you go. I mean, this looks like it's going to be a pretty smooth, uh, smooth win here for Narva. That's really impressive. There's over a 400 rating point difference between these two. So I'm, of course, always very happy f for seeing female participation. And now this is a very efficient way of, of lady participation. More and more teams are getting, by the way, women players on their teams. And one of the reasons for that is that we actually reward teams that have female players on the roster because their rating counts as if it was 100 points less for the rating cap, right. which is important when you try to form the strongest team possible. No, and it could be huge. I think teams that are smart about that advantage, obviously trying to encourage more and more of the world's top women players to compete in this event is part of the reason we do that. And and some of the teams that really have these stacked lineups, Anna, have taken advantage of that rule this year. And as you said, Narva is... Uh, helping their overall lineup be stronger there because of that rule and, and maybe maybe going to help even more than than that just by beating beating Hare Krishna today. Back back to the other board, uh, we talked about Malev 12 versus Grover. That, of course, is Jan Elvist. Here's a little bit of a of a different story. Still still pretty unclear on the board. Not not a clear exchange, although it's looking like Elvist is is making it happen on the queen side. That looked like a free pawn to me in this uh, this A pawn, right? How you like them apples? I like it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I completely agree with you. I'm curious how the dynamites will survive if if this round one is looking so good for the horses, yep. then they will need to try to bounce back in the in the next rounds because this is looking really good so far for the Estonian team on most of the boards. Yeah, agreed. And there's a lot of games underway. Again, we've already reminded everybody you can go to the chess.com server and follow them yourself if you aren't happy with the game we're choosing to cover. But uh, on I'm looking around, let's also go back to the game between first, second, and Sria 9-7. That is Meshkovs versus another uh, top women's player who's taking advantage of that rule. And I, I, uh, I like her position still a little bit, but not as much as I once did. After, mm -hmm. D, after D4, the trade happened. And what happened here? Bishop B4 check, Bishop D2. A lot of trades feel like Look at those B pawns. How often do you see a pawn structure like this? Double B pawns for both players. Yeah, and, and the issue, I guess, is that despite how we felt earlier about liking... Uh, Cesardry's idea of rushing the g-pawn, and now, now the position looks like the king on e1 is is going to have trouble ever finding safety here. The rook to e8, okay, so she she says, I'm, I'm going to castle, and I feel okay about that, but but now now you wish you could move this pawn on g5 back to g2, right? But the chess.com <laughs> bugs prevent that. So that's, yeah, that's the problem with pawns in chess. Like they can never yeah. go backwards. Sometimes it's so painful that they cannot go backwards. As you said, the g5 pawn would love to be on g2 in this moment. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see if uh, Meshkovs can kind of work his way back into uh, doing what he's supposed to do, I guess, as one of the top players for Estonia, win this game. Uh, any, where, where else do we want to go? Let's, go? let's go to this game over here between the... Uh, we've got Ivlev versus Kriakvin. That's uh, the Stormbringers and, and uh, the Phoenix. We haven't covered any of those games yet because this looks like it's about to be kind of instructive if White just brings this knight in to a square like F5 or H5 this bishop is mm -hmm. no longer liking the outpost square that it has on d4 as it's locked out of defending his own king. Yeah, it looks like a typical good knight versus bad bishop strategic position. Uh, you have pointed out perfectly the squares where this knight is heading toward. Right. And that will mean big trouble for the black king too. So it's not just a positional outpost, it's also about attacking the black king. Yep. I think this, this could be already a winning position for white. I, I agree totally. Back to the position where I think it all started to happen. White recognized the potential of this, where Black played this move. Bishop takes d4, uh, rather than taking with the pawn. And White mm -hmm. immediately responded with bishop g4 on move 17, everyone, which is instructive because part of the part of the way you outplay your opponent in these types of positions is you see the forest through the trees, you see the potential for weaknesses, even if you don't have access to them currently. And bishop g4 is, is starting that plan to kind of surgically remove... Black's light square bishop. That simplification is going to give white access. 
And I think, honestly, after this move a6, bishop f5, here white, black has his last chance, I think, to stop this plan on, on move 19. Black probably should have just played bishop takes c3 and gotten rid of that pony, right? But after rook b8... White White never lets him do it again. Now he just plays knight e2 and, and, and brings the knight around to the king side. So probably black yeah. should have done that. It's incredible that uh, a player of uh, the Grandmaster level, we see the Grandmaster Dmitry Kravki, and 25.89 his rating. Yep. That's over 250 rating points difference between him and his opponent. But in this game, it feels like it's the other way around. Like, yep. I feel like... The white player is the grandmaster. He's handling this game really well. The knight on f5 has appeared, and then g3, king g2. This is how all the strategy books tell you to yep. improve your position, bringing the rooks to the h5 now, doubling rooks on the h5, and the h6 pawn will drop. Yeah, I mean, perfect, well said, Anna, and I think that you point out that this is, it feels like the much stronger player is white here, and again, it's it was kind of a simple blunder that black didn't, remove this knight with the bishop, but it's why you have to have the foresight of the potential weaknesses in your position. Because as you said, Anna, what stops white from just doubling rooks on the h-file? This h-pawn is lost. The queen's going to go with it almost, right? This this position is just... It's rare when you see a position that's still equal on material where it's just over. White is just completely winning here, and this is a uh, our first maybe example of uh, uh, maybe a game of the week candidate here. Obviously, yeah. uh, David Pruis is doing a lot to cover Pro Chess League Lessons, as we're calling it, PCL. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, or uh, or the Twitch channel. The video, the VODs go there as well. So we try to analyze the more instructive games in detail throughout the week if you if you ever miss live coverage. So quick shout out to that. Um, yeah, definitely. I, that was basically part of my preparation today, listening to David Pruis. So you got to check out those highlight videos. Very well prepared videos. And uh, he definitely shows you what you miss if you couldn't follow 15 hours of chess every week, which we expect you to do, of course. They should just like they should just plan their entire Tuesday and Thursday around this. Everybody can get a day off from time to time. Call in right? sick. Uh, you say that That's you've right. got a headache. Yeah. It's not not hard, right? Um, the, uh, plus, these days, maybe your maybe your work is just shut down if you live in the states. So if that's the case, welcome, <laughs> welcome viewers, and we, we appreciate you being here. So uh, let's go back to this game between Hari Krishna and uh, Bullet Bullet Emo Bullet Timo. Um, that of course, my Narva, because obviously Hari is still much worse down the exchange. But now I'm I, I started my my eye was spying the clock on it, and I'm looking at it and recognizing oh. that one of the things that makes a strong player good is even when they blunder. They still make it as hard as possible, and usually they play as quickly as possible. They, they're going to mm -hmm. make you beat them, right? They're not going to beat themselves. And here, my Narva, almost under two minutes. The position isn't any easier than it was before, from my view. Black is currently threatening the e5 pawn, so something tells me that Hari isn't, uh, isn't down for the count just yet in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree with your statement here that it's not so easy to convert this advantage of white into a full point, especially if we take into account the time management. Hari Krishna right. keeps playing really fast, and that's what he should do to put pressure on his opponent. I still root for the lady player, underdog, trying to upset the top board of the Dynamites, but yep. it's not so easy. Yeah, I agree, and I think the uh, the upset is uh, still still the most likely result. She's a very strong player, so time pressure or not, when you're winning you're winning, right? And, and, and usually the technique there uh, can can be found, especially because we have an increment time control, right? It's not like under two minutes is, is going to be the end-all, be-all. Um, you should be able to find the best moves if you have the increment. So queen f4 is a nice one, offers the queen trade. I don't expect Hare Krishna to do it, but queen g7, kind of the only move that avoids it. Or, or actually, okay, queen h5 also would be a double attack, rook on d1 and the pawn on e5. So, so okay, Hari's going to pause for a think here and my guess is try to continue to create the most chaos possible. That's uh, that's what you do when you're losing and your opponent's under time pressure. Keep it as murky as possible. <laughs> good advice. Good advice. Right. I I I'm in I'm in losing positions on a regular basis. On I don't know about you, so I know I know a thing or two about how to play a losing position. In case you're wondering. I didn't, All right. want, to, I didn't want to say that. Good advice by the most experienced player. By the most experienced player position. in the world of being lost on camera, both literally and figuratively. All right. The um all right, so many places to go here. Let's go back to Gupta's game. Abhijit Gupta versus Ladva. Uh, that is of course Oxer username because this one looks like it's about to be a uh, a point that the dynamite desperately need, especially if Hari Krishna does not complete a comeback there. Mm -hmm. Black is just much better. 
up the exchange. I don't think White's going to have enough of an attack. The C pawn yeah. is probably running here pretty soon. Definitely, this looks like a winning position for Gupta. So that's good news for the Dynamites because we thought that at the beginning of the round, the match was looking really bad for yep. them. Now it seems that if Hare Krishna survives that position against Mainarva and they are winning on this board, they can actually flip the result. How about uh, Elvis against the High Grover? Is it still... Yeah, it's that, that position is still better for the horses. Yeah, which position? The oh yeah, uh, Estonia. Yeah, uh, this is the black pieces against Sahai Grover, and uh, yeah, this looks like a very unpleasant endgame for White. But still, the eight pawn is on the board, so that's a passed pawn for Black. Yep, and, and, the, and the, the fish pair. Yep. The C pawn. This looks like kind of a kind of a smooth. Two weaknesses kind of went too, because Black could also play for something like H5 and H4 mm -hmm. and H3, right, and just really make White's life difficult trying to defend both sides of the board um shout out to everybody yeah, in the twitch sorry. go two ahead pawns up. I, i'm counting so bad it's two pawns up for no one one but it's going to be a second pawn when he takes on c5 and it, but I, you're right it feels like two anyway because these double yeah. f pawns <laughs> giving giving the past h pawn make make life uh easy so but shout out to the twitch chat just want to say hey to chess bay bjh all of our mods um we see lots of comments and feedback coming in we appreciate that uh, good to know how you guys feel about the broadcast, um, and uh, and yeah, thanks. I thank really you, appreciate thank everyone tuning in, especially from the part of the world where Danny is streaming from. I think it's very early in the United States of America in this moment, half past seven. I'm never up by half past seven, so thank you so much for tuning in for today's action. BJ Chesbe and all the other moderators, thank you so so much for being so active already at such an early time of the day yep have your having your coffee with us or your tea you know um whatever you're into so all right well okay now we got to go back to this game with Hari krishna one uh, a, a, the gupta game just to quickly mention it looks like it's just headed the direction of gupta winning he's up on the board up on the clock but Hari krishna's game definitely the most exciting one right now on a look at this because Hari. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, if you are rooting for the underdog uh, female player there on board four, this is not going the direction I think that she wants. She's now under a minute, and the position looks more unclear than it has in, in 15 or 20 moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah not... certainly it's improving for black. The position It's still an exchange up four wide, but with pressure on F2, the C3 point hanging as well. Uh, this could be an escape for Hare Krishna, and I wonder if if he escapes, will he even manage to to get the full point? With her, I, yeah, with I mean, this is... Having no time on the clock. It's 25 seconds now for Mainarva. So lots of... Uh, it, this is a very difficult situation. Lots of pressure on her. Yep. And it's, and it's, again, the practical scenario of, despite being winning on the board, as she definitely was earlier, in a rapid setting where you're playing a 2750 Grandmaster, right? One of the best players in the world. Um, and... Uh, it happens, right? So it, no, no, uh, no judgments there. We know it's difficult to win these positions, but uh, it just feels like now with five minutes and lots of lots of tricks on the board that this is going to be a tough one. Rook d3 was a nice move, though, and it actually I was thinking. So how how do you defend both f2 and c3? And she kind of figured it out, right? Rook d3 uh, prevented knight takes f2 at least right away, or bishop mm -hmm. takes f2 because there would have been a rook f3 uh, sort of fork on the queen and knight, but Hari says, I'm willing to take the queens off the board to get my second pawn for the exchange, and uh, maybe he made the right decision. How irritating is it when you're, you're up the exchange, but your opponent has this dark square bishop just preventing you from, from counterplay, right? It's almost like you already feel feel the pain of trying to win an obstacle bishop ending here because they the, the bishops can't challenge each other. Yeah, completely true. And with the knight controlling the c5 square, it's going to be difficult for white to push that c pass pawn. Interesting endgame, and still it should be better for White, but with only 15 seconds on the clock, I'm really worried for Minerva. Yeah, and uh, it's still objectively feels like White should be okay, but you're right. It's getting closer to a situation where it um, feels very, very dangerous. What other games should we check in on quickly? Uh, just to, to make a note, uh, 
Mezhkovs did ultimately come back and, and take down Women's International Masters Sria Sesardri. Um, kind of a nice finish there. But as as we sort of predicted on it, if we look at that game on the analysis board, we'll keep the live position on Narva Hare Krishna. But as we predicted, that the, the real problem was White's G-Pawn rush didn't work out, mm -hmm. and the fact that she had to commit the king to this side of the board, we said that yeah. those chess.com bugs prevent G5, G2, right? Can't move the pawn back. <laughs> and, and ultimately, that's really where White became undone, because these... You know, the open king here is uh, is a problem. That's why you tell so many beginner players not to do this. And here, Meshkovs just goes to work, bringing pieces to the king side. Very nice maneuver with the knight and queen. Ultimately mm -hmm. wins this pawn on g5 and uh, just completely exposes uh, white's king here. And, and so a good a good lesson. I think we really liked her play early on, right? We liked the aggression, but then it just it backfired due to, due to some inaccuracies. Yeah, I agree with you. She started very well. It was a very brave approach, but uh, yep. in the end, it didn't work out. Still, the attitude is is what matters. I think if she continues playing like this, then she will upset stronger players. Uh, let's go back to the game that we were observing earlier between uh, Ladva and Gupta uh, for a moment, because I was... I was trying to understand what's happening with the White King there on H3, if there's yeah. anything going on. I, I, but, che I checked back on... The to be winning anyway. Bishop takes G5, Rook takes C2. He's trying yep. to get some perpetual? No, I don't think he has. If Queen takes C2, Queen E6 check... Yeah, no, the King this can tuck itself, it's tuck itself on the dark squares. Yeah, the issue is you, you want Bishop C3 check here. You want something that uh, punishes the King, but... But don't think it's going to happen. Ladva making that move with 0. 0.2 seconds on the clock, right? That is <laughs> living on the edge there. I think Black can just play Bishop F6, okay? And indeed, Gupta does it. Now Bishop G7, I'm guessing, should be pretty straightforward because after Bishop G... Or, or the Queen comes back, I was thinking it's only a matter of time before this Queen finds herself on a light square and we have checkmate. Wait, Queen H1 mate. Queen H1 mate. We did it, Anna. We caught our first checkmate Yay! on camera. Yay! <laughs> right? We live for those moments. Checkmate on camera. <laughs> Boom. All right. Well, the only other game still going from this first round of play uh, is now the the Narva game versus Hare Krishna. And she's holding her own at the very least from the perspective that this felt like it could go fully the other way on it and Hari could come all the way back and win. Mm -hmm. Now that she seems to have settled into a, a, a position that I think she can kind of make a lot of pre-moves, gain some time back on the clock. Mm -hmm. You see there she just gained a little bit of time. I'm thinking she's going to hold the draw here, which is still going to be, objectively speaking, not a bad result for her um, on, on board four versus board one, right? Yeah, and practically speaking, I think she should keep her rook on light squares just to make sure that she's not going to blunder the rook. I agree. Uh, she's not doing that. I would just make moves that are on light squares with the rook yep. to be 100% safe. Now she's doing it. N and now uh, she has it. If she's smarter, she should just pre-move rook e8 and rook g8. She's She just needs to put the rook on light squares. g8, e8, and c8 are all safe enough. Um, yeah. And then we won't see a... Uh, uh, a huge Ooh, blunder but now the black camera. king. Uh, oh, it, black has managed to activate his pieces, and the G3 pawn is dropping off of the board. Yeah, Ashing actually, that that was a huge black mistake, King D3. I think Black's winning now. The more once you said that, I was thinking that King D3 was just a huge mistake. Yeah, um, the black has defended the F5 pawn. If Rook G8 check, King F7, Rook G5, King F6, and then he will take the G3 then, pawn. And then uh, it all works out. Right. And again, Anna was talking about, okay, from a practical perspective, just get your rook on a light square, which is, is great advice. But the other thing is that the biggest mistake you can make in these types of endgames for everybody watching is that you have to just know, like, what is the, what is the one breakthrough that your opponent's going to have? And the fact that White had this pawn on a dark square meant there always were going to be some winning chances. So just no reason for Narva to move the king too far from that pawn. And that's how you can... You, you mentioned making pre-moves with the rook on it, but also, like, if she just put the rook on a6 and then just pre-move the king to g2, right? Yeah. Just keep your king yeah. on a light square, and you avoid all of this stuff that happened. And uh, unfortunately now, not only is she down on time, but she's, she's also lost on the board. Too many pawns for the rook. Yeah, um, Project League Commissioner Greg Shahadi is informing us that we have missed an exciting finish between Ivlev and Kravkin, the good knight versus bad bishop. Uh, position Ultimately that came down to a uh, a, bu a brilliant checkmate. Let's show that real quick. Yeah, you can you can see the live position. Oh, this is great. 
You can see the live position on the Hari game, just for those who've been following with us very close. But look at the analysis board to see the finish between Ivlev, who won this amazing game, super dominant night. Eventually, what Ana predicted came true. White doubled on the H-file, crashed through. But the most exciting thing was that here, this move C2 opened up a brilliant force checkmate. The rook sacrifices itself. The queen flips to A3, and Bob's your uncle next move on E7. You have an Uncle yeah. Bob, right? We've talked about that. You have an Uncle Sorry? Bob? You have an Uncle Bob? Bob uncle is your Bob. Uncle. You have an Uncle Bob or you don't have an Uncle Bob? What's that? <laughs> I don't get the joke. That's okay because it's a Canadian joke and no one gets Canadian jokes, so you're in good company. Um, all right. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, all right. Let's also mention quickly that Dimitrion Draken, helping to lead the way for the Volga Stormbringers, did indeed get a big win on board one here as black to start things off bring in the thunder for mm -hmm. the stormbringers i love it but on this one i understand the uncle bob i'm not, <laughs> not so sure what it meant <laughs> all right so many places to go uh i i um if you see an exciting game on it just shout i'm i'm looking at mm -hmm. you know we have games underway for all four of the matches um I, uh, I'm looking at this game here between Bador Jabava with the black pieces versus Women's International Master Dordzivia. Um, let's let's go check out that one here. Because Jabava just played this move G5. He's trying to be aggressive on the king side, but but I feel like White is a little bit ahead of the game as far as an attack on the queen side if she can find some accurate moves. I, I'm not maybe queen to C3 so that you're actually threatening to take A5. Um, yeah, I like I like that white. It is white to move, and as you mentioned, with queen c3, she would be threatening to capture on a5. The queen side is really open, so with opposite side casting, you want to be the first to arrive with your attack, and it seems that she has been faster. Wow. He's been attacking, and Jababa doesn't care. Look at that. E3, I think Jababa just either he knew his knight was trapped and that he had previously made a blunder, or he was trying to show confidence because he just gives up the knight with zero hesitation. And this this is going to be a wild one here. Exciting. Wow. Who is better here? Who is better? Now it is Black who has arrived first in terms of the attack against the White King on G1. The G5 is opening up. He's about to take on F2 as well and bring a rook to the G5, Queen G3, Queen H2. All those moves are coming. So this is really sharp. And it will depend on one tempo who is who's winning because she's material up, but she will have to protect the king. Something like queen b2 I like, so that the queen would come back to the king side if needed. Yep. G takes f queen takes I, f2. I, I love that move and good call. Yeah, George Zivia knows that she needs... It was a dual-purpose move, like you said. The queen protects the king side, but now is also threatening to either take a5 or play b5. I'm not sure which is better, and I'm also not sure how to deal with the move h3 coming. So Jabava, yeah. in, in classic Jabava fashion, right? I mm -hmm. mean... When he when yes. he's on, this guy wins chess games the way that we all wish we could win chess games, right? Indeed. Sacrificing yeah, pieces and um, such a romantic style of playing, and he just decided it doesn't matter that the knight was trapped on d4. He would just go all in, yep. launching the and h pawns, and it seems to be working. I don't see a defense against h3. And... Yeah. I, the more I look at the position, the more I think Jabava is. This will be one we have to keep our eye on because we might. We might catch mm -hmm. ourselves another checkmate on camera, right? We're like we're like hunting yeah. in the in the in the outback for checkmates in the wild. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's what we do on this show is we try to find the most exciting moments. A reminder, all of you, if you disagree with the moments we're covering, just go to the chess.com live server, use the command to mm -hmm. uh, to follow all the games. So as we as we try to go checkmate hunting here, um, let's let's go to this game, Infernal Infernal Yam. I think th I think that's what the username is versus Pavel Pankratov um, for the Phoenix. This is this is also a wild one where Black is down a piece on him, but probably probably on the better side of it from a practical point of view. It looks like this attack is very dangerous against the White King. Uh, let me catch up with you. Um... That was uh, Infernal Infernal Yam versus Sarah Black Panther. Sarah Black Panther. I oh mean. yeah, I got it. Uh, it's funny how he must have written his name in Cyrillic. That's why we don't see the name appearing next to the Filia Master title. Right. The Filia Master, that is <laughs> the I... player of the Volga Stormbringers writing his name in Cyrillic. Yep. 
I, I don't even know. Um, I wasn't even going to touch that one or pretend to try to pronounce it. So yeah, <laughs> we'll just, we'll no, be... it's just it, we can't read it. It doesn't appear. So it's not even Cyrillic, but I'm, I assume he wrote it in Cyrillic originally. That's why right. we can't see the. I thought it was just a fashion statement. Maybe he's, you know, he <laughs> wants it to look that way. So, um, all right, but no, this this position is super tough. So, how would we defend this as white, and what instructive elements could we offer? Because I don't think that it's it's busted at all. It's just that you have to you have to find an accurate way to simplify and prevent pressure. Black black is actually the one taking time because I think white is a move or two away from defending. I mean, there's moves moves like knight g one. In some situations, no, I guess the queens can be traded and the rook falls. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what move is white playing if black just plays something like rook f4? Like, what's the, what's the next move for white? Good question. After rook f4, we can't move the knight away. White would love to trade queens, but it's not happening for multiple reasons. There's this yep. uh, hanging rook on f1 in many, many times after queen takes d3, rook takes d3, and also rook h4 after rook f4. So... I, I agree with you that this is not a simple position, even though it's a piece up for white. There's two pawns to compensate for it, and the king side that's wide open. Rook f4, I like. Yeah, black still hasn't played it yet. I guess Pon Krotov is thinking that now's the time to play the most accurate move possible. Makes sense because the time scramble is uh, is about to commence. So use it, use it while you have it. Um, but uh, maybe another move being considered is is g5. I guess the main thing I'm trying to, or I'm starting to realize is that white doesn't have any moves to make here, right? Like moving the knight would allow a queen trade, and then and then the rook falls on f1. Um, yeah. Moving moving the rook from the d file, I'm I'm pretty sure we can just trade again on e1, and if knight takes, we trade queens and win the rook, and if the uh, rook takes, we just take on f3 straight up. So. It's hard to find a useful move for white, which even if a computer is comfortable playing that position up a piece, no human being is. So I think g5, rook f4, okay, rook g6 threatens mate on g2. The mm -hmm. issue with that is the knight, now the knight's no longer pinned, though. That's but, true. The white has to protect the g2 square, either uh -huh. by moving the queen or the rook to the second rank. That's actually, uh, that's a real problem, right? Moving the knight to a square like e1 would allow queen h4, and we have a new kind of mate. Um, yeah. If the rook guards the this... is a uh, Bibi Sara Asagueva. I've managed to figure it out in the meantime. Uh, she is one of the top players of Kazakhstan. She's only 14 and years which, and old. And which board is that? Uh, this one here with the white pieces. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. She, um, she's only 14, one of the top players of Kazakhstan. And uh, Commissioner Greg Shahade promised that we're gonna fix the name so that it can appear next to her logo. Well, uh, well, well, she tries to fix her position. We'll try to fix the name. But let's <laughs> check back on Jabava's game. Somehow that rhymed in the end. I don't even know what happened there. But uh, Dordzivia <laughs> is um, is under fire against Jabava, and I just don't want to miss. I don't want to miss the magic here, right? Mm -hmm. Don't want to yeah, miss a thing. We gotta stay for the checkmate. First Aerosmith reference in a long time. Shout out to Studio C. Let's get the producer on camera here for just a minute. For those of you that don't follow us at Chess.com's official, basically reality show that we've launched, Twitch.tv slash Studio Chess. <laughs> there you go. This place is always popping. You got MVL who's just watching, judging, lurking. Hikaru's eyes never go Aww. away. So. I love it. I love it. Um. I gotta subscribe to Studio Chess. Yeah, it's it's honestly it's become a very dangerous thing against my own will. Uh, Aaron has basically put our our Chess.com HQ on on camera all the time, so I have to call I have to ask him to earmuff it on a regular basis when we're talking real business earmuffs. But it also means you need to wear pants, Danny. I, I exactly right. I normally walk around shirtless, wearing nothing but the Pro Chess League backpack. Very commonly, these are the things that I do in the office, but no longer. Um, <laughs> All right, the uh, the attack. Let's see. How does Jababa finish this thing off? If rook g2 is a move that pops into my head, queen h2 is a move. Um, I expect Jababa to find something fancier than both those because it's what he does. Uh, but okay, rook g2, king f1, and then queen g3. I'm thinking is the finish because queen g3. Yeah, queen, you, you, you queen g3 take. or queen h2 both look like it's also game good, over. right? And now queen h1 is uh, is coming and. That's the um, one last check for white, and this is it. Queen h1 mate is threatening, and if bishop takes g2, queen takes g2 is mate as well. 
All right, well, brilliant game by Georgia Baba. Something that the Tbilisi gentlemen will expect from him all season long. And uh, he is helping them get on the board first against the Moskva Phoenix. So, all right, where to go? let's go back to this game, Infernal Yam versus the Black Panther. Because um, mm -hmm. she's defended. I mean, she's defended some of the, some of the critical moments here um, against Pankratov. Yeah, this is only 30 uh, once seconds again, still, a though. Rating gap, over 400 rating points between these two, and she's playing very well. Knight f3 now, activating the knight yet again. And she has, after she has managed to exchange a pair of rooks, the situation is less dangerous. Yep. The, uh, the game we had there on screen for a second is one that we'll also keep our eye on um, the cross town game. Uh, let's talk about Vlad Dubrov's game versus Joshua. David Jojua, um, Moskva mm -hmm. Phoenix. Not not for the Moskva Phoenix, the uh, the Wizards, and uh, and the gentlemen. I I still feel like the Wizards are are a matchup that's a nightmare when you when you're throwing a guy like Vlad Dubrov on board three with a twenty four seventy eight rating. I don't want to say they're St. Louis worthy yet, but they're you know that's pretty rough. I think um, it doesn't get much better than that, and that's why to go into the week here they were tied atop the league standings with the Mumbai Movers. So. Um, Wizards are going to be tough all, all year in the East. Yeah, and they are also one of the teams with the coolest logos. I heard Robert has commentating on which yeah. logos, which team logos are the nicest. And I certainly agree with him that this one for the Moscow Wizards is looking so impressive. I agree. And shout out to our amazing uh, design team, our head of design. Uh, Dallin himself loves the Pro Chess League. Eric has to keep him focused on things like product and things for the website because all he wants to do is just come up with new creative logos all the time. The Barcelona Raptors is a great one this year. Oh, I um, love it that's too. An, yeah. That's an amazing Gaudi logo. Gaudi so. has always been one of my favorites, and yeah. now he combined Gaudi with the Raptor, and this is a chess team. So all three of my passions are there together in one logo. Let's let's go back to again. We'll we'll. we'll uh... We'll come, we'll come back to Dubrov in a sec. Ah, darn it, I knew we were going to miss it, and I, I got there like literally oh, no. split seconds too late if we go to Infernal Yam's game, unfortunately, uh, oh. for uh, Sarah Black Panther. She does ultimately fall here. We left this one back in a position kind of like this where even even regardless of whether white with the most accurate moves is okay with the knight versus the pawns, this is just such a tough position to be in, right? In a, in a rapid game with a wide-open king, Computers can find the most accurate moves. They don't have those emotional worries that we do of our king being exposed. But humans just can't play these positions under time pressure where you're always worried about getting mated. And black just won every pawn and uh, mm -hmm. ultimately got the queens off the board because that now that you had enough pawns, that was the easiest road to victory. And so too many pawns. The knight is not the best piece at stopping past pawns in case you didn't get the memo. And it's over. So big win there. It where, was a big comeback. It yeah, was a big, big comeback. comeback. And, and where do we go now? Let, let's go back to Dubrov's game versus Joshua. Because mm -hmm. this is... I've been Woo! talking about Dubrov <laughs> being... This is an exciting one, though. I've been talking about Dubrov for the for the uh, Wizards, but this game looks like it's going to the gentleman here. I mean, Joshua mm -hmm. is on the attack, and why isn't D3 just on the board, right? D3. Yeah, it is coming. It is coming. D3... Right? And bishop takes e3, queen takes d3, so there's no problem with the hanging queen on e3. And at the end of these it's lines... We game over. d3 is winning a piece. I well, don't the understand g, the why. The g4 bishop is also hanging, so I, I, I'm wondering... The only other thing is maybe Joju was like, look, d3 can't be stopped, so maybe we will see a move like bishop d7. I'm not sure. But I, I thought that in every line he wins more material. So, for instance, d3, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, knight well, takes. Well, I was thinking that white, white won't take again on d3. White will take g4 while the black queen is still on d3, maybe. Um, ah, I understand. Mm -hmm. And because, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Because if, if white takes again, then the knight is coming in with both the fork on yeah. e1 and the fork on f2. Um, so d d3 bishop takes queen takes and your point is f takes g4. Right. And I I uh, we're in agreement. I think black is still, you know, seems to be in fantastic shape, but the point is maybe there's no need to do it. And whoa, whoa he surprises us with rook takes f3. Nothing like us us getting like Nothing like us getting tunnel vision on a variation that just has nothing to do with what the players are thinking about, right? Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Rook takes F3. Wow, this is, was unexpected. It yeah. might be just brilliant. It might be just brilliant. So if bishop takes a three, bishop takes a free check. Uh -huh. Knight takes a three. Queen what, takes. what was going on there? I assume after queen takes f3, one of the key points is that the queen couldn't block on e2 because then another pawn falls with check. And so if the king had to move, now you've got the knight coming in. And so uh, Dubrov was just not interested in that and plays the move king to c1 fairly quickly. Also down mm. to a minute on the clock. So this is another reason why Jojua should, Jojua should probably win this game. Um, this is just a great attack, and Dubrov doesn't have a lot of time to defend. A really impressive game. This could well be another candidate for game yeah. of the week. I agree. I agree. This is maybe maybe the most exciting one we've seen so far, even though we missed the opening. Um, yeah. A game that I've kept my eye on just because it was it was it's been under time pressure for quite some time. Um, let's just we'll keep the live board here, but analysis board now shows Sigoriev versus Volkov, uh, also from the gentleman versus the the wizards, and just pointing out mm -hmm. that uh, this should be. Should be a draw, but uh, Sigoryev now under 20 seconds um, in this rook ending. So if this gets any closer to a decisive result, we'll check on it um, while we while we keep the game between Jojua and Dubrov on the on the board. Yeah, uh, it normally should be a draw, but in <laughs> under time pressure. Although it is White who has more time on the clock, so for yeah. defending, it's better to have, of course, an extra three minutes. Shout out to everyone by the way watching us now on Twitch. It's over 2,200 of kind people interested in chess watching now the Pro Chess League action here on Twitch with Danny and me. And also, I wanted to give a special shout out to our fellow streamers. I see Bigfoot in the chat, Alec TV is here, and the one and only Commissioner Greg Shahadi. Absolutely. How shout out to. Uh... How many donuts? Shout out to BJH who created his own command just to to troll me, but in loving support. I can't wait for tomorrow getting my own personal <laughs> Twitch channel active again. He's um oh he's personally pushing me all the time to do more streams. So uh, you can you can give either me or Anna a follow if you hold your mouse over the player. We have extensions there. So follow follow Anna's channel, follow my channel, and uh, and thanks for all your support. And I, I see you, BJH. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, all right, well, That's what happened amazing. here? We're going to be back at streaming tomorrow. Okay, two games are about oh. to be really exciting, Anna. We've got Sigoria. Yeah, we've got to stay here. we got to stay here. Yeah, I mean, we've got... Okay, so D Dubrov has defended this position, and now I have no idea what's happening. White is suddenly up on up on the clock, and, and Black is... Um, what what happened here? I got distracted by the chat, and I just want to take a quick look that after Rook takes F3, Rook F2... The combination that ensued with rook takes d2, I wonder if he just underestimated how quickly hmm. white gets the, the queen side going with b4 and c5. Because Jojua has gone into an endgame where despite being up material, what matters is who has the most dangerous pass pawn. And this is going to be really hard to defend, but also, look, look at the game over here between Volkavi and Sanin Sigoryev. This is, um... What has happened to I, his pawns? White... He was a pawn up. He was a pawn up, and now white is... Okay, This, this. I think this should still be a draw somehow, but with both sides getting queens, I can hardly calculate it. But uh, also about to have a photo finish over here. If you're following both games, Volkov and Sigoryev are down to the final seconds. Um, and I think... I think we, we finally have a a draw, because I don't see a skewer. Both Both sides will get a queen... Both sides promote, and it's a draw. And and we do have a draw. Okay, so we'll we'll stick to Dubrov's game. Where okay, crazy stuff. But I mean, again, how did Dubrov turn what was we were calling for game of the week status here for Jojua on a? Uh, <laughs> now this is gonna be blunder of the week yeah. if he from a winning position with Black managed to get a piece down. So again, the combination there was was a little. Maybe maybe it got a little overzealous there. I mean, rook takes f3 seemed like a very very strong move, but the combination that ensued under mutual time pressure didn't give Black anything. And uh, maybe we were maybe we were right originally that you know a simpler approach was was called for. But okay, either way, Dubrov gets a ton of credit for defending resourcefully, and if he makes a comeback here for the Wizards, then you know we'll understand even further why they are atop the standings. 
Um, yeah, and as you mentioned, Dobrov is a very strong grandmaster, being board three, uh, lower rated than usual. And that profile picture I actually recognize. I believe that photo was taken here right behind me when he played in the challenges group at the Tata State tournament. I don't even know how you know that about the photo, but that's awesome. The <laughs> I think it's Alina's picture because she takes these amazing photos. So I, I'm pretty sure I have seen that photo. Got it. Um, well, he has completely worked this one around. Joshua uh, is probably moments away from resigning. Uh, and a uh, huge, huge tip of the hat there to Debro for fighting his way back. The one match we haven't even given really any love to yet because it started the latest is the one that we probably spent the most time previewing at the start of the day. Um, and that, of course, was the matchup between the Eagles and the Mumbai Movers. For those of you who didn't follow 2018's playoffs, the Eagles are the ones who eliminated the Movers last year in dramatic fashion. So this is, you know, a bit of we're building kind of a rivalry, right? That's one of the things you, a lot of people love about sports is you love rivalries. And because this event is truly so global, uh, it's it's hard, I think, to always have a local rivalry. Like, you know, you think of Yankees and Boston, people that just hate each other because they're too close. <laughs> Um, we're still in chess, like which team from St. Louis is going to go. Right. Uh, our understandings that now that the St. Louis Archbishops won against the Webster Windmills, yeah, right. it's good to have these rivalries. <laughs> it, it is, and, and here this is a rivalry that's building because of actual, you know, history in the league, not not anything, you know, culturally or, or uh, you know, being too close to each other, right? I think that um, mm -hmm. this, is, this is a matchup that the movers would really love to get. But uh, Magsudlu is the current World Junior Champion. He's actively... Uh, playing in Viking Z there with with Anna. Um, Anna's not playing, but he's he's playing it on. And now on his rest day, he's joining us yeah. for this game here. Yeah, it's just amazing to see how active these players can be. Hikaru Nakamura did this also last year when he was participating in Gibraltar, and on the very same day when he played his classical round at the Gibraltar tournament, he then went on to stream and play in the Pro Chess League. So great to see such dedication among top players. And here in Tata Steel, we have, by the way, Anish Guri, who's on the Chess Bros team. We have Shachman Medyarov. We have, uh, um, i got to come up with a full list of names, that I believe like almost one third of the field has a Pro Chess League team as well. Yep. Okay, we'll we keep did. our eye on this because we, we, we know people want to follow what goes on between the Movers and the Eagles, but the the game that looks closer to finishing, and I, and I don't want to miss the moment here because this is... Um, this is also between the movers and the eagle. Ah, and we caught it on camera, at least in the analysis. I, I was going there just because I was was spying it. Like, hey, something nasty is about to go down. And indeed, a, a I didn't expect that, though. A blunder of checkmate and one on the analysis oh, no. board. Uh, ba Bagdasaryan is defending against a very strong grandmaster in Surya Ganguly. So uh, it, it is tough, but still, the position was probably close to... Close to defending until Queen G5, just blundering checkmate on E1 right as we went to the board. So Ganguly strikes first for the movers, and they now have a one nothing lead over the Armenian Eagles. Yeah, that's a really painful, painful blunder. I was trying to come up with a list of players. I realized I forgot to mention the U.S. champion, Sam Shankland. He, of course, is also a participant of the Pro Chess League. And Vishya Nand, I hope to see him again being active in the Pro Chess League. Magzulu is the board one for the Eagles. That's why we have it on the live board. But I think there's some more exciting games. Let's go to Sargisian's game versus Adiban Baskaran. Um, that's Ana Sargisian is 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 white in a, in a crazy game right here against Adiban Baskaran. That's Fireheart nine two versus Sargisian one for those following in live chess. And it's uh, I don't know. And the D six knight is hanging, but so is the B three knight. I thought Sargisian maybe had chances for an attack. Yeah, she takes with the queen, and there's threats of rook f eight. If you take with the rook on b3, so is Sar yes. What? Background B, puzzle rush time. What does Boscaron have? Oh, he has queen e3 check. I thought he was just he's gonna play queen e. Then he plays it queen e3, and he'll play queen h6 check to guard f8, and then he'll take I think on b3, or I'm completely mm -hmm. wrong and he'll just take on b3 with the queen. Yeah, I'm wrong. Okay, so that'll happen. Yeah. Typical Adiban game, as pointed out in the chat. All oh, his games are very exciting and yeah. uh, double edged. He is not afraid of going sharp in any position. I thought you were going to say typical that I was wrong, which is also true. Um, but yes, typical Audubon game. Um, what about what about oh, Zabi? <laughs> I didn't mean that you're always wrong. You're only wrong in 90% of the cases, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You're welcome. That, 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 was, that might be the nicest thing you ever said to me. <laughs> only wrong. All right. Uh, let's go to Zavin Chess Moods game. Um, because Zavin Andreasian versus Sadwani, also a crazy one. Looks like Andreasian is... 
is uh, is on the hunt here for for a white king here, and uh, could be could be bad news bears very quickly. There's a threat of rook f2, and then all kinds of problems over here on b2 and a2. So, all right. So Sadwani so stops that kind of, but uh, but the bishop's hanging on e4. If I'm doing my math correctly, um, and you know I don't believe in math, so you can check it if you want. But I think the, I think the bishop's hanging. Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm agreeing you. I'm I'm agreeing with you in this case, Danny. In this case, thank you. No, it it is it, is, it looks pretty <laughs> obvious though. Uh, jokes aside, right? Rookie four, the queen has to move, and then the, you don't even have to worry about back rank problems. The rook can come immediately back to the f file, and I think I think black is just about it. indeed Zavin plays it. I think black is now up material, and possessing the compensation with the attack. So the Eagles will yeah, win this one. Yeah, winning position for uh, Andresi on the top board. Of uh, normally top board of the Eagles, but now if he's on board too, thanks to Mark Sudlu taking the duty on the top board. Look at that move, Rook F2, though. Nothing like making it a little exciting. Sadwani trying to oh, go for some tricks. Little... Yeah, I have a feeling that this one's also going to end in a, a, with, with some sort of exciting breakthrough, but um, let's. Uh, Let's head back over here. We'll keep it on the live board just to see what happens. Yeah. But the analysis board is now yeah. showing back to the game between Sargisian and Boscaron because Sargisian only has 30 seconds in this game, everybody. And um, this one is, is also going to be very close. 30 seconds left for the board four of the Eagles. Once again, I'm very happy to see fellow lady players taking more spot mm. on the... Wait, teams. I'm wrong. It's not the most exciting game. Let's go to let's no? go to Magsulu's game. Oh, Masu Magsulu game. He just played this crazy move. Bishop takes g4, which is fantastic. Uh, wow! Launching an attack. The bishop is poisoned due to a discover check on on f3, I guess, or on e5, depending on how you look at it. Followed by mate on g2. So Magsulu just crashes through, and I think he's also about to win a game. Um, in uh, in crazy attacking fashion, Queen G3, King H1. Oh, puzzle oh, rush! Rook is coming. How puzzle classy. rush! King G7, classy I move. I saw you did puzzle rush for the first time the other day. Your YouTube video. I did, but I'm totally addicted, and I promised to my Twitch audience that I'm only gonna play again when I stream. So I need to get back to streaming because yep. I'm so addicted to try to improve my score. It's a really cool, a really cool game, guys. You gotta try it. Puzzle Rush, and I also have a Puzzle Rush emote. Yeah, that pink Puzzle Rush emote is nice. on my channel. I'm so proud of it. The okay, well, the game ends quickly here. Rook H8. Just for those of you wondering why, uh, why White resigned. There's threats like Rook takes H3, and after the pawn moves, F3 loses its defense, and Bishop takes F3. We'll put it away. So, um, all right, back, back to. Uh, there's a number of games we can go back to. Let's let's bring everything over here to the game between. Boscaron and Sargisian Fireheart 9-2. Um, because this one, I think, is still much closer. I think Zavin is about to put his attack versus Sadwani away. Um, mm -hmm. What's going I mean, Sargisian is holding her own here. And look at Boscaron, the one under more time. Just not normally what you see, I think, with the stronger player being... Um, well, okay, I guess I guess it's closer than I, than I was making it out to be. Both sides under 20 seconds, but... Yeah, but certainly pressure for both, and that the yeah. position is not clear at all. He's a pawn up, but he can't really take advantage of that right now. With the seventh rank being controlled by the rook and the queen of white, there's lots of pressure on g7 and then the king side. Shout out to all of you just joining us. If you're just getting here, this is the 2019 Pro Chess League season. Week two, the biggest matchups in the Eastern Division are going down here, and. Uh, Several several hours. We got about three more hours here with me and Anna. And then you've got Grandmaster Robert Hess and Alexander Botez taking the reins. I think today. Actually, who who comes up after us? That I don't even know. Um, I believe Robert and Alex, but uh, oh no no yeah. today today it's actually Amon Hamilton. Oh, Amon Hamilton and Botez. Yeah, so his brother, his brother. Look at Sargisian working the breakthrough here. This is a huge upset as White. She is taking she's down. She's taking she's a piece down of the top board. It's over 300 rating points difference between the two players. Adiban, one of the, the toughest Indian players. He's from the Olympic team of India. 
Oh my word! Oh my Addison. god, look at the live board. She's completely winning. Boscaron just needs to be put in Zugzwang. Move the bishop to g4. The king has to lose the h-pawn. Should be over. Um, oh, very nice move, actually. Bishop 7, bishop g6. She's going to defend the e4 pawn. She just needs to make sure that the e4 pawn stays alive so that she has enough material left on the board to win the game. Okay, this takes a little bit of a technique. Because yeah, where's, she... where's the ideal diagonal, I'm wondering? Yeah. Uh, this is... This is really, really that weird. Like, how, how, yeah. do, how do you... Oh, she gave up the pawn! No! Oh! Ah, she must have removed she it! it oh, a blunder! No. Oh, yeah, my gosh! And they just agree to a draw. Oh. But, okay, I, no, I was... That's a hard take. I was trying to back up on this analysis board to see what happened, but now I'm just going to stay with what was what was the position, because how what was the win here, Anna, if at all? How does White... How? It's not so simple. So the, the trick is, uh, well, she needs to control the h5 squares to uh -huh. make to make a kind of a two turn position where the black king would need to abandon the defense of the h4 pawn. Right. At the same time, she cannot give up the e4 pawn because yep. that would be a draw position. So it's not as simple as it seems. I'm not sure what is the right way actually. Yeah, let's. Wow. And, and the way you would try to. This may be one of those really just sort of accidental theoretical draws that black kind of stumbled into. Um, and I say luckily, not to take anything away from Boscaramba, because that's it's one of those rare moments we use the term luck in chess. Chess is so scientific, right? There's very little luck involved, but sometimes you do blunder, and it works out that you're not completely lost due to some obscure geometry, which um, mm -hmm. which is kind of the case here. So to use imaginary chess, everybody, even if you put this bishop on g4, watch the analysis board, if it's black to move, the black king will go to f4, and then you still have to guard this pawn. And if you go hmm. to f5, the king will go back to g5. So there, there's actually, where is the square white can have both protection over h5 and protection hmm. over e4? That's what you try to do in these positions, sort of visualize your way to a victory instead of calculate your way. That's what you can yeah. at least learn from, even if it's not possible. And I don't know that it's possible, Anna. Where's the, where's the move? Um, I have an idea, but okay. not with the king on h3. I think I like the position more when her king was on f3. Ah, that would... Okay, right as you say that, that's got to be it. And that, in fact, it's actually a pretty easy win there. Now, so what, what she should do is this. So the, the king, put the bishop on... Go back to the bishop being on the, let's say, the h3 uh, c8 diagonal. And yeah. what she misunderstood was this is already ideal. The king should just be wandering. The king should be wandering this way. Forget about the H pawn because by the time the Black King goes there to help it, White is in in good enough position to just give up the bishop and then win the E5 pawn. So that was the easy win. Duh. Okay, you're right. But still, very interesting because yeah. in a practical setting, she just lost sight of the fact that the only and I think that's actually the only way to win. There is no Zugzwang with the bishop trying to do what she was doing. The win is just being prepared to give up the bishop for this H pawn and go win the King and pawn ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was already difficult um, with the king on h3. She was trying to create a tsukzong, but I think from there she had to come back to this position where her king is actually more active right. and above the bishop for the h You know what she should have done, Anna? She should have watched your king upon endgame videos. They're so good. <laughs> on chess.com. So Check it out. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> Anna, has, Anna has some great king upon ending videos and some really interesting little like uh, phrases you developed to try to remember the ideas. So check out Anna's videos. They're fantastic. All right. Um, where to go, Anna? Thank you. I'm just learning from the best. I watched all the Danny Ranch videos before I made my own videos for chess.com. Well, let, let's go to, uh, okay, so Maylive 212, that's Jan Elvis. He did just get a victory over Sassardry. So Estonia uh, is trying to fight their way back in the scoreboard against the Dynamite, and Elvis mm -hmm. is leading the way. Um, so many other games to go to. One, one that has my eye is the one between Hare Krishna and Ladva. That's GM Hare Krishna versus Ogsur. Um, let's go to that one because once again, Hari is down the exchange. Anna, is that the theme today? He's just again? gonna he's gonna lose the exchange but win anyway. Maybe that's what he's gonna do all day. Well, he must have been inspired by the world champion because Magnus sacrificed an exchange three times in his first two games here in Tata Steel. Yep. It's the trend. It's the new trend of 2019. I feel your pain, spoiled kitty. She's uh, he he she whatever the username is saying uh, stuck at 30 on Puzzle Rush and it feels so bad. I've I reached 42 like my first day in Puzzle Rush, Anna, and I've never beaten it really? since. Like the first 42. day, first day I got oh, yeah, 42. And I I could only get to 35. I need to train more. I've I've gotten th I, my average tends to be like 38, 39, 
Like, but I've I've reached 42, and then now I'm just like now now when I cross 40, it's like a celebration in the house. Like my kids know because I'm sitting there on the phone. They're like, "Oh, dad's ignoring us." Hashtag neglect. Hashtag therapy. But at least he broke 40 on Puzzle Rush. That's what I'm going for. So, um, <laughs> the uh, all right. Well, no, yeah. but seriously, Hari Hari here I think has more compensation than he accidentally got, right, against Narva in the first game. Um, this this looks true. like a position where the bishop is doing well against the rooks. Yeah, it looks like it was even uh, okay to give up the exchange, and it's not that he just lost it in a worse position. And look at this. Yeah. Ladra goes for rook takes c5, giving back the material, and he wants to try to defend this rook end game. I'm not sure this was a good decision because I, well, it's not there's the There's a couple game. different weird... Yeah, there's a couple different weird lines that happen, and one of them is whether you can take on c5 and after rook takes b4 quickly bring the rook back to c3 if you're Hari and the idea is that in a rook ending the faster you get your rook behind the pawn uh, you know the the danger here for black is you don't want to get your any pieces stuck in front of the pawn because then they're just frozen um, and so we'll see it we'll see if Hari employs some idea like this where he tries to quickly swing to the c file with the rook and then just just mm -hmm. push him push him baby as Yaz would say push the pawns. Yeah. yeah, he can take it with the B or the D pawn. It's an important decision, so he's definitely taking his time for that. And uh, he went B takes D5, and then Rook B1, King E2, Rook B2, King E3, Rook takes A2, Rook takes H7. This looks like a very a very nice Rook end game for yeah, White. I yes, agree. there's a pass pawn, but connected pass pawns for White, and he's taking on G7 as well. This should be I, I feel like Ladva maybe... Sh should have just taken on d4 right away. Okay, but either way, I think he was feeling the pain. It's a good example of an exchange sack by Hari this time, and, um, you know, doing the best he can also now with less than 20 seconds to defend against uh, Dr. P, as I call him here, Hari Krishna, Natala Hari Krishna. He's <laughs> he's good at, He's good at chess, so. Um, really good. The Dynamites are leading this match already with 4 to 2. So if Hare Krishna wins this Rukian game, it's going to be already five points for the Dynamites. Just a reminder to everyone that this year the scoring system is different from the previous editions. So a win, a team win gets 10 points, but it also matters how many points you score yep. all in all. That is, it's not just about winning the match, but the more points, the better for the overall score. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a, it's going to be a storyline we keep coming back to. Those who fight, even when they're losing, may end up paying the dividend. Oh, let's go to the game between Meshkovs and Grover, um, because we just had... I, I, I spied it because of the time pressure and, and was curious, mm. but we just had a queen sack on the board. After oh. queen to c6, rook c7, maybe kind of forced, but I, I think white has compensation anyway, whether it was forced or not, because... The king is perfectly safe on f3, and these f and g pawns are a real problem here. It's a funny piece setup with the rook on e4, king on f3, and yep. bishop on g2, aligning up all on the long diagonal. Wow. And look at this move, king g4. Meshkov is going to put the bishop on f3 to guard e2. The bishop guards e2. The e2 guards mm -hmm. the bishop. The bishop guards the rook. Everybody's defended, and these pawns are just going to push to freedom. This is, this is like a nightmare I had once. Where my queen was just like moving back and forth, and there was nothing to do with it. There were other things that happened in that dream, but that that was really, really a rough one. I I, I still remember it. Um, do you ever do you ever have? Anna, I have to I have to ask this because as a former, you know, once pretending to be professional chess player, I don't play as much as I used to. But did you ever have stress dreams where chess is like entangled with real life? Where like oh definitely lots right? of times where you have like <laughs> it's like you have like a piece but then suddenly there's like a conflict with your dad and then like the bishop is stuck on the dark squares and then like you know, you, you know what I'm not I'm not even kidding you've had those dreams right it gets very weird yeah no true story and I also told Lawrence the other day on on stream that sometimes I managed to solve the positions that I didn't solve in my games. Like they end up coming yeah. back in my dreams, and I and and then I solve them while I'm sleeping. It's so weird. It, I, no, I know. I've I've had I've had those uh, had those moments, and that's one thing I don't miss about playing chess as, oh, as yeah. a professional. <laughs> but seriously, though, this is this is a great game by Meshkovs. This is kind of a brilliant um, a brilliant opportunity that he took when he sacrificed his queen on c7. If you just got here, look at the analysis board, and this this queen sack. Um, really points out a, a theme we highlight a lot about unbalanced material positions, which is it doesn't matter whether the queen is worth more points or, uh, or the rook and bishop are 
are less valuable. But here, the fact that black has no threats because of white's pieces all protecting themselves so well, and white is the one with a clear plan, which is to push these pawns faster than anything black can do, it's, uh, it's a really instructive uh, way to see how, how pieces can outplay the queen. The queen, going back and forth, just lacked any targets, and it was just a matter of time, and, and there you go. So great game there by, uh, by Mezhkovs for the Estonia horses, who needed it. They need to come back here against the dynamite. Point. Yes, very important because at the same time, Hare Krishna has won his game. So yep. it's still a two point lead for the dynamites, but at least the horses are trying. What about the other two boards in this match? If we are already looking at. Uh, yeah, the um, let's see. Where are the other two boards here in the dynamite versus, um, versus the Estonia horses? Well, we already know that uh, one of them was done because uh, Jan Elvis did indeed win. In fact, I, I don't oh. think there, there are no more games going actually right now. They've already finished them, so we are we're oh, on to the other right. matches. I, them. I, was look, I was trying to look at the list, but I also didn't see them. So yeah, it, the next round is about to start. So... And again, uh, now we're back in that position of so many amazing games to choose from with the other two matchups going on here today, of course, between the Volga Stormbringers and the uh, Moscow Phoenix. We've got Abdu Satorov. Um, let's go check out that game because we haven't given that youngster a shout out. Look, he changed his profile picture. I wonder if that's because he's mad at me. Abdu Satorov, I said you were cute and adorable. And, and uh, Chubby is a cute... I'm a dad. A dad. Cute, adorable, chubby. That's a good thing, dude. Like... I, I, I said his last profile picture, I was like, is he really that little? Because he looked like the most cuddly little angel. Um, but he now... He looks like that in real life, too. I met him a few years ago, and he's still so young. Yeah. But probably he learned that you were praising... I was, I was, I was saying he had an picture. adorable avatar, but now he's changed. He looks much more... Abdus Aturov, if this is what you were going for, buddy, you look, you look very mature in that picture. Very mature. So, good job. Um, all right. Very mature. And I think that's what teenage boys are aiming for. So teenage boys and girls will not want you to tell them how cute and... and I know, uh, I know. As, as soon as I said it, I was like, he's not going to like that. Because he wants to be fierce, right? right? He wants he's, to be he's fierce. A, he's Abdu Saturov, right? Um, he's, not a, he's not an adorable little kid. Anyway. Um, <laughs> a, and, and speaking of uh, Abdu Saturov, he just played this move A5. The past A pawn is going to be nightmares here for the Phoenix, and I, I don't think that this is going to turn into turn into an attack that works out for Black. It's the only moves that justify Black's position on are things like F3 to try to get G2, but one, maybe White can just steal that pawn, and two, even G3. I just I don't see where Black is getting the breakthrough here, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this looks like a winning position for White with this A pass pawn. Right. I've just said that Nodirbek is still only 14 years old. I saw him first when he was the under-10 world champion. And he's one of the the biggest hopes of Uzbekistan, of course, after after their former world champion Kasim Janov. Yep. Um, all right. Well, okay. Here, a five. Obviously, uh, a lot to think about right now for Black, but I'm I'm lacking lacking to see a clear plan. The queen does so well on c six. I mean, look at her. She's guarding g two, stopping mm -hmm. things like f three, stopping things like e four. I mean, literally, Black has no moves. So now. Now he plays knight d5, but um, but even that lacks threats. And also bishop e4 looks good now, right? Put the bishop on e4 to help guard g2. Also double attack the knight and then get back to uh, to pushing the ape on to victory. Yeah, totally. Or, or just pin the knight with bishop c4. Bishop e4 and bishop c4 I both like. Yeah, bis and bishop c4 e4, also. E4 is unstoppable. I, you're right, maybe bishop c4 is even stronger. I was still keeping my idea of attack and defense in mind, but bishop c4, you're saying f3 is just not an issue. White can play g3 and no problems, right? That's that's the idea. Yeah, he, he's, he needs to calculate. He has to be precise before he gets mated right. with f3. But No, I think you're right, though. That, it looks like it should be fine, and then the knight's going to fall. And the reason on his right is because of the pin emote. Hashtag pin emote. Pin, pin, show. pin emote. <laughs> I pin heard. emote. It's one of my favorite emotes. I'm a bit emotes. slow now. I'm a bit slow, but I'm, gonna, okay. I'm guessing there, guys. I'm guessing there. There oh, we go. Uh, Abdu Saturov took your advice. No longer cute and adorable. Dare I say the C word. Fierce. Chubby. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's fierce. He's a tiger. He looks very mature in that picture. And the Volga Stormbringers, <laughs> they have brought the thunder. I just uh, The best players they can. All right, very good. Um <laughs> I like it. Thunder. 
Do we have a thunder emote? Let we me should. Check. We what? should have a storm. It, they should have their own channel with a whole bunch of just like storm pictures, clouds, Thank lightning, you. thunder. That's a. Yeah. I'd subscribe just for a whole bunch of those. Oh, me too. I'm gonna use the exclamation mark for thunder. Um, and a right. bit of a hype and protest league logos, guys. Use your favorite emotes in the chat. I want to see your favorite chess.com emotes. The. Uh... Lots of other games to go to here on. If you, if you see one you like, I think Abdus is going to take this one. The, probably the, the biggest on paper matchup this round is is the one between Lexi Sexy, that of course is Badur Jababa, versus Vlad Dubrov. Um, a board one versus board three matchup, right? I mean, uh, the Tbilisi gentlemen are led by Jababa probably all year, but, mm -hmm. but this is GM on GM action, regardless of the fact that it's a board one versus board three. And I think Dubrov. Dubrov has his chances here, but look at those pawns. That's that's a lot of pawns, right? That is a that is a big center, as they say. Um, <laughs> that's true. Let me count them. Is there no? It's equal material, but it feels like white is material up because of the lots of space that he has and this yep. d5 pawn potentially pushing e5 too in the future. Mm -hmm. But okay, the more the pawns push, the more this king becomes in danger over here on h2, right? So Dubrov has his has his sort of, uh, you know, ace in the hole in the sense that white has to be very careful with over-expanding this structure. And this is uh, an instructive drawback or instructive takeaway for everyone watching and that is a drawback about having more space is when you have all these pawns advance, if you add minor pieces back, put a dark square bishop for white on d4, put a knight for white on any square, c4, f3, right? Then you start to see that a huge space advantage can be used well because the miners have, have more squares, more options. When you have a huge space advantage, but without miners to fill those voids, it's really potentially just a whole bunch of weaknesses, right, Anna, on the dark square. So I, the more I look at the position, the more I'm thinking Dubrov is in pretty good shape, other than other than the fact that he's down so much on the clock. Yeah, it's a bit, little bit problematic to be down on the clock against Jababa, yeah. who is a very dangerous tactical player. Yep. So he's going to go for some tactical tricks and attack. But you're right that White is weakening his king with all these pawn pushes. So the drawbacks of the pawn pushes is that now the king on h2 is not very safe. Well, again, um, lots of games to go to. Let's let's go. Let's check back on this game between Abdusaturov, uh, where Abdusaturov is now. Now he's got a pin on the G file, more pin emotes. Up, oh, he's winning a rook. So we caught the last moment. I believe we're going to see Yay! resignation, <laughs> and we did resignation. Abdusaturov strikes again. Okay. Um, another game that finished with an instructive ending just to show it is Savchenko's win for the Wizards over Volkov, um, who's had a tough day. He already he already blew a, a, a great position as as uh, black against Dubrov, and um, now, uh, now he loses against Savchenko quickly on the G file here. Very nice attack. H5, rook to G1, and then just rook G8, and a lot of dark square problems. Anna, I'm not going to tell you what the opening was of this game where <laughs> where Savchenko crushed Volkov, because I think you know. Oh, no, oh. don't remind me. No, oh. please, no. No. I know no. it hurts. I know it hurts. But the French the French can hurt at times. So there you go. Anyway. All right, Savchenko, Savchenko does uh, does his best there. Abdusar Turov did just get that win, and we are back to Jabava's game with Vlad Dubrov. So... I wasn't. Um, hey, that's the I, first I need, time I've I thrown. A, I need a moment to recollect myself. I know, that was the first time I've thrown the French under the bus all day. I mean, come on, right? <laughs> Although to be fair, it was all. It was also my first opportunity, and I took it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. It's one out of one, but I'm gonna use my chances too. Anyway, um, just just joking. But okay, Queen G7 has been played. Another another pin on E5, and I think Jababa has to figure out some way to be all in with these pawns before the dark squares become a problem and and how do, how does he do that here on what do you think i mean uh hmm. i don't i don't see okay rookie one to defend e5 fails to knight d3 you can't move the pawn because the queen so i'm just doing basic calculation here what is white's move after queen g7 um it looks problematic to keep the pawn on e5 yeah what is the move for white after. Yeah, so rookie one runs into knight d3. He goes for b4. So Interesting, but doesn't knight doesn't black have moves like, okay, knight d3 forks forks the pawn. You could also just take it. Um, but you know what's interesting uh, from Jababa's perspective is he's now he's kind of pinned the pawn to d6 because taking e5 would have not been possible, 
now that the knight was under fire. But g5. I love that yeah. move. G5 undermining the defense of the e5 pawn. Beautiful. I, think, I agree. And from a practical perspective, this is exactly what you want to do. Before you just get under time pressure and nothing's changed, you got to do something here. And uh, g5 trying to pry open avenues toward the white king. Yeah, I think this is a promising position. Maybe it's still complex, but certainly it's more difficult for White to play, except for the fact that he's up on time. So mm -hmm. the time situation favors White, of course, but the position is more dangerous if we look at the king side of White. Queen b5 is a tricky move, because what shall we do now with the rook? You, it was ideal on the e-file. Yep. Uh, under, under fire, under attack. Sorry, I'm... Uh... I'm spying some interesting games over here sure, in, in all sure. the different matches. I, you know, we uh, we don't need to go away from this, but I'm just just checking out what's going on. Um, yeah, in the meantime, he played rook to e7 to keep the rook on the e5. I think that's very logical. Still, g takes f4 is a threat, and the e5 pawn is in the air. Yep. And if e takes e6, that opens up the e5. So it's, it's smart that he kept the rook on the e5. Yeah, I agree, and I know that objectively White's probably okay here, but from a practical mm -hmm. point of view, I just still feel that I, I just get very worried. Unless the queens come off, right? If you can, if you can take the ladies off the board, you're no longer worried at all about getting checkmated, and and, and maybe you even have the better, you know, minor piece dynamic in the sense that you have the bishop versus the knight. Possibly the bishop will get open and and, and be better, but um. But I don't think Dubrov's going to make that easy, and you can see on the clock. I mean, if we compare this to a few minutes ago. Dubrov was basically right where he was, but Jabava mm -hmm. had like nine minutes. So I think Jabava is, is taking his time because he, he knows he needs to come up with something before the dark squares blow open. And what is yeah. that going to be? I think he's going to try to get the queens off. But nope, he's keeping them on, <laughs> but... Okay, now rookie two is interesting. Uh, knight d3 is on the board as a, as a possibility. Not It's not on the board yet, but could be. Yeah, and perhaps after queen a5, black had to be more precise because now I like white's position. Yeah. Keeping the queens on the board when, uh, when the black king is also becoming vulnerable with the f file opening up. Uh, yeah, I think Jobava has found a way to turn tables. Yeah, and as we said, the, what would need to happen was open up a position where the bishop could be better than the knight. And, and by winning the d-pawn, I guess now if the queens come off, it could be that kind of a game where the bishop is better than the knight because of the past d-pawn. Um, so yeah, uh, Jabava, tricky, tricky, making his way through the weeds there, and seems to be doing okay here. Yes, I think now he has a good chance to actually uh, trick Dobrov, also because of the time situation, it's 46 seconds left for Vladimir Dobrov, he goes for a rook e3, which is an active move, I like it, I think he's making good moves, maybe before it was not so precise, but yep. he's still very active. The problem is the time situation, and it's a sharp position against Jabava. So I would predict the win for Jabava, even if it's a mess. Yeah, uh, it's hard, hard to predict a win just yet, but I agree that now that now that Dubrov is under a minute, this is going to be more more practical problems for Dubrov. Um, and yeah, Queen F6 actually just threatens to rush the deep on, right? Here comes... Mm -hmm. Here comes Daryl. Yeah. Here comes Danny. Daryl. Daryl. <laughs> Danny. Daryl. I prefer Daryl, but okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I, I mean, I prefer going by Daryl as well, just for the record. So from now on, you can call me Daryl. Uh, no, but uh, the uh, the move rookie six is going to win the pawn back. Actually, maybe maybe Danny did go too fast. Now that it's a mistake, we'll call it Danny. Yeah, no, the... <laughs> The uh, the D pawn pushing was the right idea. At least it looked that way. But rook e6, queen g5 is met by rook g6, and the D pawn is still gonna fall. So, hmm. actually, a big mistake there by Jabava, because now queen takes d6 will defend the knight and threaten f3 check. And look at this turnaround. Yeah, this totally. Is be wild. D6 was premature. Now he's threatening queen h7 and also bishop d3, but f3 is a check. And what shall why, what shall Black do here? Now this is this critical. Is, and this was we talked about the practical issues that Dubrov was facing on the clock, and I think Jabava did do the right thing by tr taking the deep on. But now, now we see kind of just the old, old thing coming back to haunt you. Wait, night is that when you open the king too early in a game, it becomes very hard to uh, to deal with the potential threats. And Dubrov may have just swindled himself a perpetual. 
Yes, uh, it, this is potentially a draw, and I was I was too soon to call this a win for Jabala. It was a sharp position, and I thought that his time advantage would put lots of pressure on Dobrov, and he would crack under this yeah. pressure. But no, he didn't. He kept them defending very well, and D6 was premature. There, there might have just been. Did he just miss Queen G3? Actually, <laughs> I love your new name tag, by the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, that's what my producer does, right? That's why we pay him the big bucks there, right? Um, the uh, <laughs> the I, I want is he missing? So Queen G3, King F1, Queen H3. Okay, so I guess um, he decided there's no reason to play for a win and accepts the perpetual. But uh, I guess you know the one thing that Dubrov is doing from a match strategy perspective is he yes he's a grandmaster, but he's also a board three. And he's kind of like, hey, if I can if I can nick the shield of Bador Jababa and just get a half a point here for the Wizards, yeah. we're expecting to do better as it goes on. Let's go to the game between Sigoriev and uh, Kuparadze. Oh, right as I click there, Sigoriev wins by resignation. I saw it was getting crazy, and he plays this move e6, which opens up both threats on e7, but also queen to g4, taking advantage of the, uh, the bishop there. So the Wizards get another point. They're from uh, Sigoryev, and now they have a lead 4-3 over the gentleman. So, um, a lot of games we can go to. I'm just moving along. Anna, you can yell at me if you see something better. Um, sure. I'm going to go and check a few games, which one is in the final stage. Uh, David Georgiou against Dinara Dorjieva is also interesting. F6 has been the last move in that position. If you also can go there for a moment, because both players which, are under... Which game is that? I was... Uh, David Georgiou with the white pieces from the Tbilisi Gentleman versus Dinara Dorjieva from the Moscow Wizards. It could be checkmate... Oh, it's checkmate time. <laughs> uh, right as I click it. Sorry, commentator's curse. Checkmate yeah. time! Georgiou... Of... Okay, well, the gentlemen bring it tied to 4-4 four, four piece, so exciting stuff. Let's let's go to the game between Andraken and Afonsiev, because... White is winning, so Andraken does find a way to break through and is up on the clock now. So it, it should be should be a win here for the Stormbringers um, to increase on their lead of currently three and a half to one and a half games apiece. So Andraken performing better this week as board one. And, and not to throw any shade about last last week, but it was not his not his strongest performance for the Stormbringers. Um, and uh, but he is he is recovering here and looks like he's about to get his second win in a row. Yes, I, I believe he will convert his two extra pawns in an endgame with a good Russian technique. Good Russian so can, technique. <laughs> can we get a bit of a sound effect for that endgame, by the way, from Uncle Sasha? We, Uncle well, Sasha is commentating today. I, I don't even know where Uncle Sasha is today. I mean, I think he was visiting us before we went live. I mean, he's gone now. <laughs> so anyway, Andre, Andrekin converts. Yes, good old Russian technique. E6 check is a threat. Uh, Vogsudlu and Boscaron, um, another game that, uh, so, not, not Bogsudlu, no, Bogsudlu is a different game, but, uh, this is a Bogdasaryan for the Eagles, and Boscaron, look at that move, knight c8, wow, hmm, that's actually, let me catch up with you, oh, yeah, wow, that, that is impressive, that's a very nice combination, the rook couldn't go to b7, because bishop a6, and, all right, well, the the last two matches that were under time pressure have come to a, a quick break, and so with a very, very small pausing opportunity in the action, I want to remind everybody, Anna, of something that changed that you may not have even been aware of. We have a, we've ha had a schedule change that I want to make sure those of you that are marking your calendars early and often plan on spending every single one of your days where the Pro Chess League is live with us. Take note of the playoffs um, and uh, the, the date change to April 2nd there, there may even be another Whoa. change. We're doing our best right now to to avoid some of the biggest events in chess over the board. For those of you who didn't know, some people still push wood over the board. Um, and uh, they are the U.S. Championship, um, some big big events in Europe as well. So um, the, the finals will still be May 4th and 5th, and we are on the verge of announcing a lot of details about that, hopefully before February 1st, as far as what the official location will be, what your opportunities are to get tickets to the live finals. Um, Anna and I will be there along with along with some others in, in, in uh, I almost said the city, but it's not even officially the city yet. So we'll, we'll be careful to say, but. Um, <laughs> even, even I don't know it officially. So I would love to hear some thoughts on that, Danny, if you can. Yep, and we're, yeah. we're very close to announcing all the details there and 
hoping for something bigger and better than we even had last year in San Francisco. So, um, Amazing. Can't wait. I can't wait. Well, Boscaron is is still just playing incredibly well here. I love the way he's maneuvered the Rook and the Knight to work together on the seventh rank and on d6. This, the technique here is awesome. Now I see Bishop b5 is probably coming, where this Rook on f8 is stuck to guarding f7. Uh... It feels like black is just completely getting tied down here. You can also play rook c1, I think, if you're white, and try to get another rook in on the action. Mm -hmm. The one threat here by black is what, Ana? Is he threatening rook b8 to try to simplify, maybe? But but even that doesn't work, because if, just to show an example, if you play rook b8, can't I trade twice and then something like knight takes f7 and uh, discovery? Yeah, black takes everywhere with the discovered attack. I really like this position for white. Yeah. Uh, this active rook on the 7th rank, and as Danny pointed out, even trading that rook is problematic. Probably the most exciting game going on, though, right now for the Eagles versus the Movers is the game between Ana Sargisian uh, versus Surya Ganguly. Let's go to that one, because Ganguly has just played this move. Bishop takes a6, like, what? Bananas. <laughs> Sacrificing to blow open the king and hopefully deliver checkmate on a7. But uh, Ana says, no, thank you. I'm not going to take it. Queen f1 and now knight to g4, and who's on the attack? F2's under fire. What, what? Hmm. Bishop takes a6, I just assume white's going to be good, Ana, but after knight g4, is, is black just better here? You know what else is the threat? Knight h4. Knight h4 Ooh. is coming, and it's just going to be mate on h2. That is really pretty, yes. How do you defend against that threat? Yeah, I, I was hoping you would have the answer. I don't know. <laughs> I already posed important questions, like whatever happened to Enya, right? Did she sail oh away? My. Right? What what's going on with Enya? Do you remember that? <laughs> anyway, um, I love Enya, and I loved your tweet about it the, that uh, we're gonna discuss. But the my, lyrics... my wife and I rotate like we have our we have a an alarm clock, and I had to get up very early today at five thirty. So we rotate CDs that wake us up peacefully. You know, like you know, thunder sounds and nature sounds. But we have Enya yeah. playing right now, so I've been waking up to Enya every morning for the last two weeks. Oh, and at some I'd point, like I was like. As when I was like, what is she saying? Like, do I even understand <laughs> anything that's coming out of her mouth? Anyway. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's not so easy to understand, but what is easy to understand is that Anna Sargisian is doing very well against yeah. Surya. And now Ganguly. the piece is falling on F3. That was that was the problem with G3, is the knight. Yeah, yeah. G3 seems to be a desperate attempt to defend, but knight H4 was a huge threat. Yeah. Bishop E2 trying to collect this G4 knight, but can she just go back to well, F5? F5? Yeah. No, really amazing so that... Five, Bishop d3, queen h5, threatening mate on h2. She has to be winning. I, I agree. I think I think she's she played very well uh, in, in her first game, and, and now she might be scalping a grandmaster here. So the are Eagles clearly having a very, very strong player there on board four this week, taking advantage of, of some of the rating rules there. And I think if Sargisian continues to perform like this, look for her to play for the Eagles all year. I mean, this has been yeah. very impressive, and again... Remind everybody, really kind of instructive tactic with knight g4, pointing out that the knight h4 taking advantage of the overwhelmed uh, protection of h2. So that's exactly why Gunguli had to give up that piece. Um, a6 is, is uh, very instructive because, yes, perhaps Gunguli's position is lost. He's a piece down, but he's trying his best to make life difficult for yep. his opponent. Well, and, and, uh, and time pressure, right? That might that's his, that's, his, that's the last card here. Um, Time pressure, also this counter attack against the Black King. It's not an easy position. A takes B7 is a threat with Bishop A6 coming. So I'm not even sure what's the best move here for Black, and she had only 22 seconds to decide. I, I wanted to find a way. Oh, interesting. Rook lift. She's, is she preparing to just run the King out, maybe? But A7, you'd have to put the King on A8 anyway. Um, okay, takes B7. Now I think, ooh, I think you should have just ignored that pawn. And, and go yes, back to the attack. Yes, I thought it was better not to touch the B7 pawn. Yeah. Um, and the reason we say that, everybody, is because once these pawns are in front of the king, they're kind of like protecting your king, even though they belong to the enemy, right? So y usually yeah. opening up files will be more problematic for you than grabbing the pawns. But maybe Sargisian is, is ahead of us. On a, we're, we're playing those human moves because we're com we're not calculating as deeply. We're like, ah, oh, don't, don't make my king unsafe. Mm -hmm. But the truth is... Now she's gobbled those pawns. She actually looks like she's figured it out. I mean, where's the attack? Yeah, where is the attack? Maybe she's right, but she's only on the 12 seconds left. I can't look at the clock. 12 seconds left. Queenie 2. 
She's gonna get if she gets the queens off, she can win this in her sleep with just a couple seconds of increment, right? So a very strong move there. Take the queens off the board. Good technique for everybody watching. Don't try to find the most accurate moves when you're under time pressure, right, Oren? Right? We've talked yeah. about that. Don't play that. play don't plans that are simple and that you can move quickly for. Yeah, totally, totally. Oh my god, oh, I'm opening clips at the same time. Twitch chat is coming up with new clips. I can't look at them, but I'm gonna check them out after the stream. By the way, shout out to over 5,000 of you tuning in for today's Pro Chess League action. It is just a thrilling start to week two in the been. Eastern Division. It, it has been. It's been. It's been exciting all day. Rook D2. Look at this technique here. Sargisian is is doing what they wanted her to do when they put her in this position. I mean, she is about mm -hmm. to pull a huge upset and help the Eagles increase on their lead over the movers. She'll take D4, and just like that, this is this is over. And what a brilliant game here by Sargisian. I mean, honestly, she she was up against a, a much stronger player. Nice technique. Look at her put the hammer down Whoa, with queen yeah. takes F2. That's Boom. And again, this is a very good example of finding the simplest plan, not trying to play the most accurate moves under time pressure, everybody. As you see the live position moving back to Bhaskaran versus Bogdasarian, pay attention to this. This is how you win games consistently. You don't have to play like computers. You know you're winning in a king and pawn ending. Just get the ladies off the board. Queen takes F2. She's sacrificing her knight to get mm -hmm. this fork, but now now white just knows it's over because you're down three pawns in a king and pawn ending. And a lot of games are lost precisely because people consistently try to find the best moves under time pressure instead of finding the most simple approach to a victory. So I just really wanted to highlight a very good technique by Sargisian. She, she played great. Yeah, and once again, it was uh, over uh, about 300 rating point difference between the two players and a Sargisian with the black pieces. What an upset by the board four of Armenia Eagles. She's definitely going to play lots of games in the coming matches as well. Absolutely. Uh, we are back, as we said, on the game between Bhaskaran and Bogdasarian. We see that there's time pressure commencing for both players now under a minute. Uh, the other game, I'm going to move to the analysis board just to show you that the reigning world junior champion, Magsulu, at the white pieces, is trying to push in a rook ending here where he's up a pawn, but yeah, actually just settles on a draw, so I'm glad I showed that just so we caught it there on uh, the last moment. Sadwani, mm -hmm. international master, holding this rook ending against Magsulu, so a good result for the movers there. Um, the only other game still going... Uh, no, this is this is back to the dynamite. That's Gupta's game. So I, I guess the only other game still going, yes, is is the one that we'll go to here between Bhaskaran and Bogdasarian. Um, what do you think, Anna? Is there winning chances here for Bhaskaran, or is this just an obstacle bishop draw? Oof, uh, good question. Uh, earlier on, we thought that White was in, in the driver's seat. We really loved the position for White, but after this multiple trade of pieces. We gotta see if he still has anything left from his advantage. Yeah, he's up a up a pawn, but obscure bishops. We always say that they have drawing chances because as as the the bishops move, and and now now White can can really see the struggle of of breaking through on the light square. So a great move by Bogdasarian to play h5. He'll put the bishop back on a square like d5, and I think I think Black will hold a draw here and. Um, so again, for those of you watching and saying, why do they say these are easy draws? Okay, easy, easy is strong, but the point is, the bishops can't challenge each other. Normally, when you're up pieces or up pawns, you want to trade pieces to get your cl yourself closer to winning that simplified endgame, as we were just talking about. But obstacle bishops, not only is it hard to trade, but also it's hard to challenge blockades of the opposite color square. And so you, you get situations where there's just no clear plan often, and um, and that's why we we expect a draw here. Yeah, I think this has been a very precise defense by Baksadarian. A difficult position that he had against Baskaran in the middle game, but he yeah. managed to somehow get out of it, and this end game should be possible to hold. Yeah, I agree. He did have a very tough position, and he held. And uh, as you've been saying, shout out to all 5,200 of you. Uh, shout out to Arn, our producer. Let's search Studio Studio C one more time, because I love that Yay! guy. Arn, I almost, I almost hyped shows that we're planning on doing here, Anna. Um, I don't know if people can't see you yet. People, I love Studio I was going to say, I people can't see him. He's, he's like spinning in his chair over there, dancing. He's like showing off, and there he is. That's the guy right there. Aaron is the producer. Go to twitch.tv slash studio chess and give us a follow for the reality show that is Aaron Hawaii. He's um, He is a force unto himself, and we're trying to help him not suck at chess. That's our goal right now, Anna, is to help him get better. 
Um, that was his his name for the show, not me. Just so you know. Um, all right, but uh, all right, this this game should be a draw. Wait, is Black gonna play? No, 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 no playing for a win if you're Bogdasarian. This is yeah, perpetual check, and Bob's your uncle again. Um, all right, I think the game we got to go to on is Hari Krishna versus Elvis because this is the first mm -hmm. matchup that got underway. If you're just joining us, the Dynamite and the Horses are uh, are a little bit further along than the other matches, and they brought the big guns today or the big the mm -hmm. big explosives with Hari Krishna for using the Dynamite reference, right? They. Hare Krishna did not play week one. He is their strongest player in the roster uh, at 27.50 feet, as you can see. They need him to do well, and he and he has. He is 2-0 currently, and right now looks like he might be about to get his third win on the day, Anna. Yep, so true. And the Army and Eagles are also doing very well. They are just three points away from winning the match with two rounds to go. Huge upset we just had, just to show, uh, on the analysis board. We'll see what happens here, but uh, uh, okay, maybe it's not a huge upset. But Pankratov just beat uh, Ab Abdusaturov, who uh, is no longer adorable. He is intimidating, but unfortunately, <laughs> he's on the losing end of this game here. So that was a big win for the Phoenix, who are trying to make that match versus the Stormbringers a little bit closer, just to highlight that result. Um, all right, but staying on Hari's game here, the reason we like White is because of well. Just the extra pawns, to be honest, and both kings are in trouble, and I don't see a way that Elvis gets compensation on the king on f1 now that the queens are off the board. So yeah, he's simplifying into an end game with an, the extra pawn. Also, Black's pawn chain is really vulnerable. You don't want to have pawn structure like this with doubled pawns on the b5, isolated pawns on d5, f6. This is a this is horrible. So pawn down, and the rest of his pawns are about to drop as well in the next couple of moves. Agreed. Pawns only a mother could love, as they say, right? <laughs> um, pawns that only a mother could love. Looking at looking at some of their games here, Anna. Yell at me if you see something that you that you like. Um, yeah, let me go through. Oh, um, the position between Ladva and Sishadri looks interesting with the the queen on c6 and okay, this a pawn. Once again, this a pass pawn is becoming the theme of the day. Apart from the exchange sacrifices, yep. that is Agzer versus Sriya nine seven. Ladva is. In the advantage is white because of what Anna said about the A pawn, and plus that queen is is stuck over here on the A file, and that's that's less than ideal. Look at that move, queen c5. That move is so good on it, not only because it pins the knight, but it clears the c6 square for who belongs there, and that's the knight coming in yeah. via e5 or a5, whatever avenue you choose here. I think that now Lotva will probably play knight e5, but knight a5 I think just as good. And this c6 uh, where he must be winning. He he probably is winning already because of this knight maneuver. Very well pointed yeah. out, Denny. Super super nice heads up play to put your queen out of out of the uh, out of that square, and now you're going to put the piece that belongs on an outpost like that. Although I, I was going to say he's thinking probably because there's other moves that win material. The other move that I think won material was just a5 right away because the knight was pinned. Pinny mode on b6 yeah. and. Pin, 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 pin emote. <laughs> okay, so Ladva's just gonna just gonna transition into a winning endgame. I don't. I'll be honest. I'm not super impressed with that approach, but okay. The evaluation must still be that White is totally winning after a5 here, which I expect Ladva to play. Just. Uh... It felt like he was winning with any move, but this. I mean, this maybe what still is. is what is he winning? doing? I mean, trading there. No, and what, then... what is he doing? Okay, he's still winning, but. But this has just but been why, a little bit of weird technique here. Why is he win a piece? Why is, why is he insisting on this rook hand game? I, I agree. This is like, uh, okay, well. He wants, to, he wants to show off with his superior end game skills? Oh, uh, great. But I mean, the, apparently, yeah, it's yeah, not ideal. Uh, we'll keep the live position there. The analysis board is now reflecting the game between Hare Krishna and Jan Elvis, where Hare Krishna is still up a pawn and a much healthier structure, as Anna pointed out, these B, D, and F pawns are just weak. So we still expect Hari to get that one for the Dynamite. Um, but, uh, all right, other games in this matchup uh, between the Dynamite and the Horses still going on. Let's mm -hmm. go to this game between Women's International Master Narva, who, if you're just joining us, had a winning position against Hari Krishna in, in game one. She was yeah. much better against Hari. Hari came all the way back and kind of swindled his way to a victory. But she's still playing well, Anna. She just got another draw against a Grandmaster, Grover, obviously. So Narva playing mm. well today for the horses. Yep. And the other female player that we have been observing, uh, Anna Sargisan for the Eagles, she's also doing very well. I'm yep. curious 
what will happen when the lady players face each other. It's not going to be today because uh, they are they are not facing each other today. So we have two different Indian teams, yep. the Mumbai Movers and the Dynamites, the Delhi Dynamites. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. The, think, the only other game we haven't looked at yet, or as we've kind of made our rounds here back to the Horses versus the Dynamite, is the one uh, between... Abhijit Gupta and Nikita Meshkovs. This is the board two, board one matchup. So, uh, the the maybe the biggest one on paper here as Gupta. Gupta, I, th I think is doing okay here as White. Uh, Meshkovs is the top board as we said, and he will be placing Hari Krishna in the next game. So don't go anywhere, uh, as uh, the horses and the dynamite still still pretty close there. But if Gupta can do well against Meshkovs, that's a that's also a good sign for the dynamite. Hmm. I, uh, what do you what do you what do you think's going on in this one? Obviously, Meshkovs has yeah. the strong knight on e4, but right back at you with the pony on e5, right? So um... yeah, it's compensated. Both knights have really nice posts on e4 and e5. Yeah, um, and now you back up, and you're giving Meshkovs the ability to keep that knight. I would have, I would have looked to have traded on e4 on it, maybe queen g3 or, or something mm -hmm. to try to get the queens off the board and use the past e pawn because I feel like the knight could be a centralized knight can compete with a bishop in endgames everybody and open center typically favors a bishop versus a knight in those dynamics but if the knight is already centralized that's usually something you can you can go for it and I really don't like the way Gupta played this now now he's going to have to remove his knight from e5 and Meshkovs is keeping his on e4 yeah, this was a little strange, as Danny pointed out. Those knights were fine until White Swan is being chased away, and the E4 knight stays there forever. That's a beautiful outpost for the dark horse. Yeah. Knight E4, well. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the way Gupta played this at all um, over the last no. few moves. A little strange. Maybe on the long run he wants to try to get rid of the E4 knight, but it's gonna take ages to prepare something like uh, Knight F2 because. He will have to play queen f3, but he can't go queen f3 now because of knight d2 fork. Yep. It's not easy at all. How do you get rid of the d4 pony? Yeah, it's strange. I feel like we, we, we cursed the position almost. I came to the board thinking that Gupta was doing all right, and, and I think he was, and but just has slowly, slowly given his opponent a better advantage. Said, you know what? I'm not into playing aggressive today. You you go get it. Look at this move. Yeah. I like this move, bishop c8. Immediate threat, bishop takes g4 pinny e mode on h3 but also bishop f5 a very nice relocation where your bishop is no longer a big pawn kind of stuck mm -hmm. on b7 well yeah. see it is a really nice move queen a3, queen a3 tricky yeah. why not just take g4 though and then take e4 i oh. think it was a huge block yeah he wanted to be tricky but he's taking only the rook and two minor pieces are gone so it wasn't actually a good move by gupta uh I mean, oh. seriously, this has like been like like I I'm not joking about the commentator's curse. On I mean, when we joined the <laughs> position, right here, on move uh, 29, White was a little bit better, and not just our opinion, yeah. but the evaluation bar. And the, all that happened was White played one bad move after another, retreating pieces. Um, and Mashkos wins. This is a very important win for the horses who were trailing behind in this match against the Dynamites. I, that all, I mean, that is like, literally, I mean, look at how it ended on it with rook to c1, and then queen takes f4 with check on the board. That is like a game, and of course, I it's just ridiculous, but it's like, what was going on with Gupta there? I mean, that was just completely fell apart. Yeah. No, definitely. This this is uh, this is very strange how he collapses. Yep. Uh, an almost 2600 Grandmaster, I'm pretty sure his rating was above 2600 at some point, Gupta, yep. from Grandmaster, and he just blundered in the last couple of moves, and his whole strategy... Yep. Um, keep e4 knight and allowing his one from e5 to be chased away, that just felt wrong. Yep. So boom go the dynamite in that one. Boom goes yep. the dynamite. Anybody who remembers that one? Why have we not had more boom goes the dynamite? Uh, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, rook, <laughs> rook a4 played by Hare Krishna is enough to get Elvis to lose on time. But just to point out the instructive elements for everybody, the rook behind the pawn in this endgame just makes it impossible to defend because even if you even if you okay even if you could win the h pawn whenever your rook is stuck in a situation like this it's a useless tower and just a matter of time you always want your rook behind pawns defending in these situations so that is why elvis goes down uh, what about the game between sasardry and ladva because ladva is still winning on it but he definitely made this a much longer rook ending than we expected it to be here 
He could have won a piece 20 moves ago, right. so I, mean, I don't even, understand what's happening to him. Writers were applauding Queen C5 because it threatens A5 winning a piece and Knight E5, Knight C6, and then he says, no, I'm not into that. Rook endings are my thing. <laughs> I'll get it. Um, yeah, he must have been studying Gretzky's endgame manual and he really right. wants to know what he knows, but this is a bit too much. Okay, well, he does get the game as he should have. It just took a little bit longer than expected. And uh, the Dynamite are... Are, are seeing their lead dwindle here. I mean, in big part, I think, partly because of that game with Gupta. Very, very strange game there to see someone just kind of lose their lose their mind um, mm -hmm. and and fall apart there. But all right, what about Andraken's game versus uh, Kriakvin? Andraken has played well all day. Um, yeah. And, and, and by the way, with this win of Ladva, the horses are just a point behind the dynamite yep. that, that used to be a three-point gap. So they are doing very well in trying to come back in this match. Yep. All right. Well, uh, the uh, the dynamite will have to find themselves there in the in the last round of play. I guess they do have somebody on board one who should help that. Hari Krishna, who is three and zero on the day, could be our first four zero to. Uh, to happen here as we as we have the action live for you. Thank you for being here. This is the 2019 season of the Pro Chess League, the biggest event, the biggest global event really in in uh, chess sports. Chess sports. Chess. It is. It is the the present and future of chess, and I'm saying that from a historic location. One of the longest chess tournaments in the world is the Tata Steel Chess Tournament. This year is the 81st edition, and this is the playing hole. So it's just, I think it's fascinating that chess.com is covering both this historic traditional chess tournament that is Waikanze, of course, one of the strongest events in the in the world. And at the same time, we have the Pro Chess League, which is the strongest team competition and eSports competition in chess. And, 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 and several people playing today are actually playing in Tata Steel, but they're enjoying the rest day. Um, you can see an empty playing hall, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about Mog Sudlu here in just a second. Um, Indeed. Well, the uh, all right. So what can what can Kriakvin do to hold this? And the reason we say that I, I I think Black is better is because even though you have these two past H pawns, they're doubled, can't help each other, and if they ever push, that will be the last thing they do. The Black King comes to G7, and it's over. So so. The question is, can Andraken somehow create that scenario by maneuvering the knight around to attack the pawns? Or or do you ignore the H pawns on it and just try to use the E and the D pawns, right? Because black does mm -hmm. have a couple of pass pawns of his own. So um, Andraken might be our other top board about to go 3-0 here if he beats Kriakvin. Mm -hmm. um, I really like black. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up with you. I lost his game in a moment. Just We've got Andrejka's um, username is two Vladimirovich ninety versus uh, Savilyi Tartikauer. So um, Dmitry Kriakvin with a shout out there to uh, Tartikover, Tartikover. I don't know. I mean, but you know, there you yeah, go. Um, reference to perhaps his favorite play. Yeah, I got the the minor piece end game on the board. Okay, I think I think Black can do a number of things here to, to get this one. Knight e5 now threatens both the bishop and knight c4 check. I actually think that might be enough because if bishop e2, can I can I can I force the king upon ending or do I have to be more careful than that? Maybe you can't. Yeah, I guess you can't because the h pawns as doubled as they are just to show that on the analysis board, they're also kind of keeping the king prisoner. So White would play king d4 and the king can both never leave. And never go get the pawns, because then you wouldn't be able to catch up to them. So, instructive there to see that the double pawns holding their own a little bit as far as keeping the black king prisoner. Yeah, very instructive that white is trying now to compensate for the pawn down with active pieces, and especially in this active king. How can black do something about it? I'm not exactly sure. So king d4, if the knight comes back to e5, knight c5, Dimitri Andrakin goes for. He's one of the top grandmasters of today's rounds. He's 2,700 guys. That's that's more than a super grandmaster if we if we count super GM as a 2,600 grandmaster. Yep. So 2,600. Then he's a super super grandmaster. <laughs> he's very very good at chess, and uh, I, I'm keeping an eye out on some of the games. Of course, we have the other two matchups that are going on right now between the Armenian Ingles and the Mumbai Movers, as well as the Tbilisi Gentlemen and the Moscow Wizards. So um, 
again, if you if you want to, let's remind everybody how you can follow the league, both on social media and how you can follow the games. Go to twitch.tv slash pro chess league and hit the follow button right now. You can also follow me and Anna's personal Twitch channels. If you hold your mouse over the player, you'll see a follow extension. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Sorry, we're required to tell you that. Unfortunately, social media is here to stay on the planet. Um, and uh, in live chess, if you type the command slash follow hashtag PCL, you will be forever married to the Pro Chess League games as they start. <laughs> it's, it's a great marriage. You should try it out. It's a healthy relationship. It's working for a lot of people. Go to the chess.com live server and use the command. So um, look at this maneuver. Yeah, you by gotta do that. You gotta do that. It's my only marriage. I'm only married to chess. Look at this move coming here. Knight d6, knight f5 on it. He finally figured out where he wants that knight to go, and I, and I think that's mm -hmm. going to be enough. In fact... So Bishop much. takes d5. What's going on? <laughs> I think it was his only. I think it was his only choice, and maybe it's the right practical decision by Kriokman. But I think it was, as much as it looked like a, a willing sacrifice, I think there was just no way to stop this plan, and so I think he just had had to give up the the bishop. Hmm. But it's actually irritating. But I think knight d8 should do the trick. Knight d8 will guard c6 to prevent the king from mm -hmm. getting in, and then get the knight yeah. a little bit closer to attacking. These uh, these twin Harrys over here, twin Harry. Twin Harry. <laughs> twin Harry, Harry the H bond. I think he should stop King C six. Yes, I'm a little bit worried though that if ninety <laughs> <laughs> twin Harrys. <laughs> yeah, it it he has to be precise. I feel like this has to be winning for Black, but uh, he certainly needs to calculate how exactly if ninety eight King yeah. this is the time for that for White, or he cannot he cannot go and attack the knight. Knight d8, king d6, or knight d8, it, um, it, whatever. It is instructive to point out that it, even if black is winning here on a, it is it is highlighting that the knight just does so poorly against past pawns and in king and pawn endings, right? Because the knight mm -hmm. is just so awkward in these types of positions where, you know, it's not something you highlight all the time, but the king is the only other piece besides the queen that moves in, in, in this manner of controlling every square around it. And I think that... It really highlights it well when you when you have a king kind of bullying a knight up the board, that this is not that easy for black, despite being up a piece, because all white needs to do is get rid of these pawns, and you will have a draw. Mm-hmm. Um, totally. Then how to do I'm that? I'm curious. He has played knight d8, and I'm really curious how this endgame will turn out. Yeah, I don't... I don't see a... This is super awkward. Again, everybody, look, the king is stuck. You can't ever go to g5, because h7... The knight yeah. is several moves away from getting rid of Harry the H pawn, and it, but but you can't use your extra F pawn unless you can move the king, which you can't do right now. So mm. A4 it's played. A4. That's a, that's a weird move. I yeah, I am surprised. I saw that if he pushes a pawn, it would be the B pawn to try to exchange pawns because in general White would love to get rid of the pawns. Yeah. So A4 and does, does Kriokvin think he's winning or something? <laughs> Maybe he wants to win. I mean. Right. Knight east. Now, if King C6, what is his idea? Okay, King C6 is happening, and and we got to keep our eye on. I I also want to move over here. Let's let's keep the analysis board on the undraking it. Let's move over to Ivlev versus Bogdati two. Uh, Alex mm -hmm. Ivlev versus Bogdati two. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna keep the analysis board on the Undraken mm -hmm. game, but the live game I wanted to be following what happens here with Novikov and Ivlev because we may be about sure. to see a a photo finish under time pressure here. <laughs> Ten seconds left for Black. He has a rook versus two minor pieces, but no pawns. So material up for white, and also the white king is really vulnerable. He's trying some attack against the f2 pawn, but both the queen yeah. and the knight are defending. He just needs to regroup his pieces. If, if the bishop moves away from the e5, then queen e7 is a threat. He plays queen c1. Forces the rook to back up. And, and well, well queen h6 and queen f8. We have mate. That's why you follow the games under time pressure, because you catch a checkmate. Catching checkmates is what we do. We catch checkmates. Okay, but okay, let's go back to this game here because look at, I mean, everything we highlighted about on Draken's difficulties to win up a knight is happening. Although, okay, wait, did he just barely figure out moving the king so that Freddy, Freddy Fredrickson can run to f1? I think he did, but but we may still have a draw because after king b6, we're going to get a queen on a8 to meet, to meet the uh, newborn baby girl on f1. We Look at this. Yay. We're headed. We're headed to the delivery room. It's time. 
We have we have babies coming here. Baby girl on F1 and A8. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be a draw. What a resourceful defense with that move Bishop takes D5, Anna. Really resourceful. It was amazing. And as you said, the double H4, the Herod twins were stopping the Black King from yeah. activity. A brilliant find by Kriakvin. Uh, really puts Andraken in a tough spot where despite being much better as Black and what we thought would be Okay, I thought it would be kind of an, uh, as you said earlier, a Russian schoolboy victory, right? Just good technique, and he should be fine. But no, Kriakvin brings a little Russian school himself, and uh, Russian school resourcefulness, it seems. Okay, so this is this is still really weird, and who knows what's going to happen because the way that Black plays for a crazy win, outside chance would be you create some sort of mating net. I... <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, yeah, sorry. but the knight is still far from the white king, luckily for white. So as, as soon as he starts moving the knight... Where, where those faces should be is on h5 and h6. That's where oh, they belong. That is, the that is dual, dual Harrys right there. Dual Harrys, and okay, we no longer have twins. <laughs> um, we no longer have twins as Andraken captures one of those one of those poor princes. Um, <laughs> but uh, we should have a draw, and... Uh, and good stuff. Thank you. Thank you for I that. I love it. I love it. Shout out to Iran, our producer, is doing an amazing job. <laughs> All right. Well, um, resourceful defense by Kriakvin, and uh, that may be enough enough to hold. We did, as we said earlier on the analysis board, we caught that checkmate. Uh, Novikov going down to Ivlev. Another game we just had in the books, just to show you the result, is that uh, Kuparadze did take down uh, Dor Dorjivia. Excuse me, uh, Dinara. How, how do I say her first name? Dinara? Yeah, Dinara. Dorzivia. Okay, Dinara Dorzivia. That I think works. Doing well. So, unfortunately, she, she lost this one here. Um, so, the Tbilisi gentlemen have taken a lead because of that victory by Kuparadze, as you see here. And we still have that live board following whether Andraken comes up with some sort of weird swindle with the Queen and Knight. But I don't think so. Probably that game should be a draw. Mm hmm. Uh, where else to go? So many games, not enough time. <laughs> let's go to this. Let's go to another one of our uh, young female players here. Um, Asuba Yeva is white. She's taking on Afon Afonasiev. Um, just a moment, and I'll be with you. That's uh that's Sara Black Panther versus Rainmond. Yeah, and I see that the pro chess league commissioner Greg Shahada does keep his promises because this is the name we earlier had in a sort of uh, uh, Cyrillic attempt language for Bibi Sara. And now we can actually read her name. The uh, sorry, I just I I try not to read any comments that Greg types. But I do appreciate what my partner does. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Shout out to the commish working so hard behind the scenes. Shout out to Greg Shahadi. And uh, ju just, just kidding, buddy. The one donut, but it was at the beginning of the show. So, so I need to ask again, Greg, how many donuts? How many? How many? Yeah. Um, I need to. Well, the uh, shout out to the Chess TV chat too. Haven't given you much love. Thank you, Steffi94, for giving people advice on how to follow the games. Appreciate it. Premium member there. Uh, someone said Hare Krishna versus Elvis. That's a game you can't miss. There you go. Um, all right. I don't think that Asubieva is is finding a winning plan here. I feel like White is just trying to win on time, um, rather than use those knights use those knights well. But maybe there is no winning plan. Maybe there's just no way for the knights to maneuver themselves a new weakness. Right. This is it. We're just going to see a, a stuck a stuck game here. Yeah, but she's been doing very well. Um, she's an underdog in this game too. There's not that much of a difference, but the 150 points rating is still something. It's not the three or 400 rating points upset. So true. we observe other matches, but still, she is holding this end game. She she is actually in the driver's seat, and even yep. if it's a draw, it's still a good result for well, for Big Sarah. I think I think we are going to see a draw. Quickly, shout out. Look at the analysis board. We see that Savchenko wins yet again, after helping helping the Wizards in the previous game by beating uh, Ko Ko Kolov. Um, I'm trying to remember who he was. Uh, it was uh, Volkov. I'm sorry. 
He beat he beat Volkov in the previous game, who's now taking on Dubrov. But he just beat Bador Jabava uh, with oh. the white pieces in a crushing, crushing fashion here. So Savchenko really helping the Wizards out with a big win over the gentleman's top board. Um, but let's we, we said there may be some weird things happening, but okay, just to catch it on camera, no no wins do happen. Andrekin does ultimately settle on a draw here. So shout out uh, to Kriakvin, who defended that endgame just brilliantly. Um, amazing stuff there. Um, yeah, really impressive. As you said, this one on the live board, I don't think she's going to find a win. And now, now Black might be trying to use his F and G pawns to advance. Um, what about Sigoryev versus Yozhua? This is uh, a little weird. Sigoria versus Jojua. This is a mutual time pro. No, not mutual. Jojua under big time pressure. I know a lot of games to follow. You're trying to find it. I know. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm going. I'm going this second. I was it's looking okay. at another end. Sh shout out that... real quick. We'll keep the live board following Jojua, no, Jojua and Sigoria. But Boscaron just got got a big win against Zavin Andreasian, um, doing what he's supposed to do for the Mumbai movers, for them to exact revenge against the Eagles. Unfortunately, they're still trailing uh, by a score of five and a half, three and a half. But in case, uh, in case you missed it, we missed it, apparently. Boscaron just won a very nice game here as White over Andreasian. Looked like some nice preparation on it. He was just better from start to finish and uh, mm -hmm. really, really took it to Zavin chess mood. Um, yeah. yeah, nice win and very important win for the Mumbai ooh. movers. But still let's they qu need let's to quickly pass. go to Volkov's game with Dubrov. Unfortunately, sure. it's because we're catching yet another Volkov defeat on camera. But look at Dubrov, oh. under time pressure, but finds this move F3. Wait, maybe White is doing okay here? King F3. How many pawns does Volkov have to deal with here? Can a guy get a break? I mean, okay, looks like looks like he simplified it out, though. Now he's just up a rook. It's a rook in the... What, what, what on earth? I mean, he has given up way too much material for those pawns. Okay, but the obstacle bishop guards it. So Volkov not going to fall this time, right? The Volkov strike back coming your way, coming to theaters soon. Um, Volkov strike back. George Lucas, no, not biting that. No, no Star Wars. <laughs> okay, back to work. Back not to today. Work. Not in this game. Not in this game. All right, but Volkov but is... Uh, important for the gentleman because this match has been really close. 5-5 five, five between the Tbilisi gentlemen and the Moscow Wizards. With Volkov's win, the Tbilisi gentleman will be ahead. Yeah. Huge game right here. Volkov. And I managed to find the end game that you were discussing earlier. Uh, David Shogua with the black pieces, and he is really down on the clock uh, against Sanan Sugirov. Okay. Yeah, let's check also that out because this one's now, this one's now a full rook. Sigoryev up on time and with mating threats. Against the Black King, uh, we like White. Yeah, it looks very promising. The only question is, if Black can create enough counterplay in time, C4 has to be the move, and he has just pushed C4. So C4, C3, C2 is Black's idea, and he's stopping the E pawn. Uh, it's yep. very important that the E7 square is under control with the D5 yeah. knight. Per perfect e. timing. So what happens if he gives a check? Let's say rook f7 or rook okay. a8. He has those two checks. Rook f7 I would look at first, king g8, okay. and then try to push the pawn. And then ah, but the problem is that d6 knight is always in the air. So rook f7, yep. king g7, knight takes e7. And black is, black is fine. Yeah, but I like your, I like rook f7, king over, and then what? Okay, it's just too slow, but I, I keep I want my knight to come from d6 to to f6 or to e7. But this knight on d5 is just the more we look at it, how perfectly placed is that knight? Right, both guards e7. Mm -hmm. It prevents yeah. ideas of this knight coming around here for sort of a mating net. So the more we look at this, the more we see that black is black is uh, doing just fine. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so in. In fact, even though white has this e pass pawn, which is really dangerous, thanks to the knight and the active king of black controlling the e pass pawn, it is black who is in the driver's seat, yeah. and uh, he can then win this end game. So, Another okay, here, here's an idea, maybe. Gentlemen. Maybe here's an idea. So, what if we play knight b5 first as white to attack the rook and hit c3? 
and then if the if the rook moves to e4, I'm just calculating a line I looked at to hit the e pawn. There's rook d7. Now we hit the knight this way. Um, the knight can't go to f6 because of rook f7 check, winning the knight. Um, if the knight moves to sort of a random square, my thought was that maybe then we have the rook coming back to f7 and then the knight coming into d6. But even that, even that just doesn't quite work because black is defending everything. So... Okay, so I, I really don't know what Sigourio is going to come up with, and neither does he, because he just went from two minutes to under 20 seconds. So uh, yeah. so he also doesn't know what he's going to do, but he does play this move knight b5, and I, I think he'll probably play rook d7. I was, yeah. So I, this was the only way I could see to try to disrupt Black's blockade, which is mm -hmm. why I suggested it, but now after knight f4, I see nothing for white. I think the e pawn is just falling, and so unfortunately, Jojua took my advice. Anna, he should have listened to you. Never. Never take Danny's <laughs> advice, right? There Only 10% of the cases, they should take their advice. Pro tip. Pro tip. He failed there. Yeah, so I think that now E6 falls, and Black is the only one who can win the endgame. You know what there is? There's also Rookie 1 in the Knight D3 check. Is there a mating net? Rookie Ooh. 1, King of 2, Knight D3. No, he just that takes the pawn, awesome. but here comes... I wonder, here if, comes I wonder if there was something there. Rookie 2? Rookie 2 G looks good. Rook D2? Well... This knight can game. Okay, but now now it's probably a draw. Yeah. Yeah, good chance to make a draw in this knight and game, but it's still it's still painful to defend when both players down to ten seconds on the clock. And the issue here is sometimes you can win knight end games when you're just up a just up a pawn, meaning you don't have any other advantages. They do have, I think, more winning chances when pawns are on the same side of the board than, for example, bishops do. But here there's mm -hmm. just not enough pawns, right? You need another pawn. Yeah. You need four versus three. You need the ability to poke and prod as the knights do well and maneuver in and out to create weaknesses. But here here there's just not enough, which is, whoa, that's a fun way to get the draw. Oh, he is, a, he is, I, he oh. Did, I think he did it on purpose, actually. Okay, just to make a draw already. Well, but... you, know what, you know what he was doing? I, I legit think he was trying to catch his opponent a pre-move. It's so oh. crazy, but it is some of the things we have to talk about in online chess that we don't talk about in OTB over the board for those who don't speak French. The uh, the uh, the idea is he, I think, legit, on, I think he was thinking that the move king g3 might have been pre-moved and he played knight d4 yeah. just in Last case thing. because then yeah. he would go into a king and pawn ending where he's winning. Anyway. Yeah, that's nasty and it's something that you can learn for online chess that yep. you can catch your opponent pre-moving. Well, unfortunately, we missed the action of... Uh, board two's battles versus the horses and um and the dynamite but it looks like gupta rebounded right with explosive <laughs> chess moves explosive and that means seven and a half points for That's the right. dynamite already they are a point away or they right. only need one more point to win the match yep and they're and they're board one only needs one more point to complete a perfect day if we look at Meshkov's game versus Hare Krishna. Um, Meshkov seems to be holding his own. In fact, doing just fine, I think, at this obstacle bishop position you see on the analysis board. But uh, but if if now the Dynamite are really just in a position where they can kind of inchworm their way to a victory, Anna, probably a draw for Hare Krishna, not a bad result. Get them a little closer to that 8.5 mark. Mm hmm Eight and a half yeah, points it's impressive wins. That, that Hare Krishna is doing so well after the disastrous start. He had a lost position against the fourth four of the horses, my Narva. She was about to beat uh, 2700 Grandmaster Hare Krishna. In the end, she yep. unfortunately didn't convert it and even went on to lose the game. But that was how Hare Krishna started his day today. Yeah, Hare Krishna. So maybe, maybe starting off on the wrong foot kind of woke him up a little bit, right? Because it's turned into great chess from the uh, Indian Super Grandmaster, and even if he draws this one, he will finish at three and a half out of four, and maybe maybe he finds a way to win, um, which would which would be the easiest way for the Dynamite to be sure they win the match. So, um, other games going, there's one really exciting one because we've been following her all day. I want to check out Sargisian's game versus Sadwani, the Eagles mm -hmm. and the Movers, because Sargisian down the exchange, but may be better. I don't even know. She She's got... No, and now I guess she can't be better anymore. Black's going to give back the exchange on d7, and indeed, now the f pawn is just too strong. Wow. Yeah. Great technique there from Sadwani, though, right? Just to get rid of the counterplay. Now he's got two pass pawns better than one against Sargisian. Yeah, just in the right moment. Because yeah. uh, we have seen that Anna Sargisian is a very dangerous player for yep. 
for her rating. She's she has performed much better than her rating today, and this was an important game. Well, she's uh, going to follow this one, and now Sadwani can kind of choose between his his uh, favorite flavor of uh, of how to win. Um, you can move the rook even to a7 and just give it up for the a pawn because these two passers will beat the rook, especially with the help of the king. I think you could you could probably also play rook d2 and come around and and do it the old-fashioned way there, take on take on the a2 or sorry a7 when you have to. But now I think he'll just take. Play e4, king b5, king e2, and uh, win. Win just before the white king can get back. Yeah, indeed. And indeed, he calculates it and goes for it. There you go. Very okay. instructive. Very instructive. A game that also just ended here between the Eagles and the uh, Movers is a, is a window for the Eagles. So uh, mm -hmm. Bogdasaryan gets a win on time, but also was was on the attack and almost mating um, Akansha. Chess there. All right, Sargisian falls. That helps the movers, but Bogdasarian got a win. So where else is the match between the Eagles and the movers at? I'm looking for, okay, it looks like Mogsudalu already drew against Ganguly, Anna. Um, hmm. So Magsulu already got a draw against against Ganguly. But okay. We see the live position, Sisadri versus Narva. The girls going at it there here in the last game, but looks like Narva about to get the best of this one. That, that is that a forced checkmate or do my eyes deceive me? Wow. There's a there's a this is the game I was I was uh, waiting for. Actually, I was I was discussing the other female players, Anna uh, Sargisian, she's not going to play against my Narva today, but this is another board for where both teams have a female player taking advantage of the fact that we actually reward teams with more girls and women on their rosters. So Srija with the white pieces, yeah, looking like she is in big trouble. Well, it's big for the horses too, because obviously Hare Krishna hard to deal with on board one, and the Dynamite are are one victory away from clinching the match. But if Narva gets this win, and again we said this earlier, she's played well all day. She was she was doing fantastic against Hare Krishna. Um, she drew uh, she drew her last game against uh, who was it? I think it was uh, Grover. Um, yeah. And and now now she gets a win here against the board four she's winning that's really what you want right you want to get you want at least an upset draw or two and you want to win your mm -hmm. battle board four on board four so narva will have done her job here today um if she gets this one which i think she's about to speaking of grover we also have the game between him and ladva that is uh sahai grover versus agser agser mm -hmm. Grover looks to be doing okay here. At least the bishop pair makes me happy. But maybe, maybe I'm losing the deep on. Maybe I shouldn't be happy. Yeah, unless you can push it. It, it depends if black can if uh, if black has something against d5 because this would be the moment for white to save yeah. that one. D5, c takes. Um, what's going on there? Do I need to trade rook so that I won't be pinned on the d5? If the position opens up for the bishop, then of course the pair of bishops will be extremely happy. There are pawns on both flanks, and the b7, a7 pawns will be hanging. So I'm looking at d5, c takes d5, trade off rooks on d5, and if the bishop takes d5, the b7 and a7 pawns are in the air. Mm -hmm. Showing that line on the board for everybody, and, and I, I agree. Although, uh, you wonder if the knights can do something tricky quickly against the ENF pawns, but these types of endgames are exactly why the bishops can dominate the knights in an open board, because with those pawns mm -hmm. falling, there's no way that white's queen side won't be faster. So black black probably can't just trade everything on d5. So after d5, is there a move like knight f4, kind of an inner mizzo fork? But then you start looking at crazy stuff like e6, and what? And I, I, I don't get paid enough to calculate this. They're still paying me in chess pieces. <laughs> They're still paying me in chess pieces around here, so... Um, you got to the chess, though. I'm, I'm not going to calculate that, yeah. Um, but just to point out, the result is in the books, and my Narva did get the win here. That's uh, Bullet Timo helping the horses get one game closer, which is why you see the score reflected, 6.5 to 7.5. So this game between Grover and Ladva is a big one. Big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. So it, depending on this game, the match can go 
both ways still. Probably, I mean, yeah, if Lodva can get a win as black, then then Hari is back to having to win, and he, he actually may do so. Let's go back to this game with Hari Krishna versus Meshkovs, because mm -hmm. even though it's been an obscure bishop ending here for a while, he's creating he's creating chances here. On he's got he's just played this move. Uh, he's got d4. White's trying to play e3 to kind of simplify things, but by playing e3, White now risks that f3 and g4 will become targets on the light square. So, so Hari is you know he's push he's pushing this one here. We saw his countrymen get a huge win. Uh, in Wyke and Z, right, where you and Lawrence were covering, and I was in the chat for that one where Jordan Van Forrest maybe mm -hmm. misplayed that, that end game, right? Um, it yeah. led to some fun Twitter banter, but, um, you know, here this is also also an end game with, with bishops on the board that maybe Hare Krishna can, can squeeze one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite possibly. He is definitely trying to do so. It's not so simple with opposite colored bishops, and the problem for black is that his bishop is pinned on the A file. As soon as you move that bishop to B5, White is so happy to trade rooks because yeah. without rooks, it's even more likely that White is going to hold. Yep. Yeah, and the reason, honestly, said that you you need you need the most pieces possible to really take advantage of your opponent's weak targets, and uh, so that I guess that is the biggest issue that Meshkovs has going for him is that um, probably there's going to have to be some trades here if you're Hari Krishna. Either you got to go for the rook ending, trade bishop for bishop or you have to move your bishop and allow the obstacle bishop ending. So we'll see what Hari chooses. But I, I have bad news on him. They called they called me out on my laziness. <laughs> Grover Grover has indeed gone for the line that I predicted with D5, Knight F4, and E6. Mm -hmm. So again, I, you're going to have to take the wheel on this one. I am not going to calculate this position. I refuse to do any work here. This is completely bananas. <laughs> sure, let's not do that. Sahai versus Axer. I don't, even, I don't even know where to go here. I mean... Greg Shahan, our PCI commissioner Greg Shahan has said that if we're going to look at that game, he will have another donut. Yeah, exactly. More possible. I think the stakes are very high. Well, let's stick on this game for a minute um, and uh, see if we can calculate it out with all my jokes aside. We'll analyze this one here for a few seconds. Knight takes D3 is... is one option, and after e takes d7, you could take f2. So maybe this will just be a lot of a lot of smoke, right? Much much ado about nothing. If everybody just gets traded, it's not that big of a deal. Um, indeed. Okay, knight takes d3. What is going on here? I'm predicting these moves. Don't they know that's a bad sign for their chess? If I'm predicting <laughs> the move, don't they know that? Didn't they get the memo? Um, I think you have to take on you have to take on. D7, unless, is he, is he really going to sack the exchange? Let's see. Rook takes, no, okay, he does. He takes on D7. Yeah, as, no, he as does. As I predicted, and I think we'll see knight takes F2. And maybe it's just a big, a big fancy way to get a lot of pieces off the board. I'm curious how this will turn out, because for now it's very promising for white, I believe. If knight, but rook takes D7, it can only be played once the knight is not hanging, so he has to play first knight takes f2. And after knight takes f2, well, there are a couple of options. Yeah, you could take c6, right? That's the inner miso that's the that's dangerous if you're if you're black. Knight well, takes f2. Yeah, because you're threatening c7. The d7 yep. protected and you have like, you're going c8 anyway. Promotion. Well, that, that's beautiful. Knight takes f2, d takes c6. And I love he does it. it. Yeah. Immediately, black takes back, and now the king takes. And the reason that was a move order that worked for white is in the end, the d7 pawn has protection from the rook. So, um, it wasn't much ado about nothing. It looks like it was exactly what white should go for, despite how crazy it looked. Because Grover seems to be holding on to the d7 pawn, and yeah. he's threatening things like bishop a4 to go get more. Indeed, it's equal material, but it looks like a winning position for white. He's preventing that knight g4 check with bishop d1. That's a super Just accurate make... move. Yeah, because right, if the f6 pawn would have dropped, then the d7 pawn was also in danger. So I think this is very nice that he yep. first prevents it with bishop d1. Then he can activate his king. Well, Grover the may end up being the hero. Pawns, I think it's very problematic that you can get to f8 with the black king, and that's it. You cannot get any closer. Yep. By the way, anyway, king e three, king d four, king c five. Well, not not blundering the pawn on d seven, but on the long run, the white king yeah. will be active. 
Yeah, I, I think this is this is going to be a game that Grover gets, and he may end up playing Hero because as I keep my eye on the game over here between Hare Krishna and Meshkovs, I think we're just about to get to a draw. So uh, that'll be an 8-7 score, and um, with the with the last pawns coming off the board here, should be pretty easy for Meshkovs to hold the draw, which means we are completely down to whether Grover gets this win, and I think he should, right? Bishop d1, as you said, on a great move. The bishop is coming to f3, c6. Um, good stuff for white. Rook, rook d6 yeah, is a move he here. It, and if, if he wins, he wins the match for the dynamite. Yep. It no matters how many points they score, both for the horses and for the dynamites. Right. We've it's had a lot of close match. I mean, look at... Look at the scoreboard down all the way from the top to bottom, right? We've got seven, five, seven and a half, six and a half, six and a half, five. I mean, this has been a day of super close matches. There is, there is, I mean, we've been covering the Atlantic, or I've been covering the Atlantic as well, just the way the timing has worked out on it. And we hope to have you with us much more. And once you're busy being, you know, the world's most famous chess commentator these days, you, you do the world championship. Now you do Tata Steel. I mean, when you're, when you're no longer as busy for the Pro Chess League, We'll have you doing the Atlantic with me, and we've we've seen some blowout matches there on it. If you haven't followed it, St. Louis and the Chess Bras are off to an amazing start, and we've had we've had two weeks in a row where they actually had matches clinched before the last round of play even began. So this is this is the opposite of that today. It's completely the opposite. Such close match matches. I was following the broadcast, and I was also in the chat as I promised the other day. I was hanging out there when you and Jan were commentating. And I, I thought I was I was uh, most impressed with the Chess Bros because uh, yeah. that's a team. Because they, they have a huge fan base. Everybody knows Eric, Amon, Robin, and Yasser, of course. And be, apart from having a huge fan base, they also play extremely strong chess. Yep. So it's not just that they are the fan favorite. No, yep. uh, Eric Hackman especially was really impressive, and Ivan Saric. Yeah, Saric has been a huge pickup for them. Um, putting putting Eric in the board three situation, as I've said a few times, I think is is just um, you know it's really helped relieve the pressure. I think psychologically he's just playing better chess, um, yeah. and uh, and is working out. We're we're staying on this one right here, everybody, just so we can catch the first clinched match mm -hmm. of the day. We expect Grover to get this win momentarily. He is up a piece and a pawn. He knows how to use both of them. We think <laughs> we think anyway, um, and. Uh, he should just, he can even just gobble h5 here, I think. Okay, he's hes hes going to guard a6 so he can move the rook and then push, which I don't know if that was totally necessary, but again, Grover should still be winning, and this will be the first decisive uh, match of the day with, with the Dynamite winning 9-7. to seven. Indeed, and Grover has four minutes to figure out this on game, which is completely winning, of course, um, so he will just make sure that he, he doesn't uh, step into any final tricks. I don't even know what he can blunder here at this point, but... yeah. You always need to make sure in a blitz or a rapid game that you just don't become too too optimistic about your winning chances. Always be careful. There, there can be lost tricks. Um, now the bishop is hanging, but after a7... A7, like the rook can do nothing, right? Yeah. A7 and then bishop uh, c4, bishop b5, for instance, to control the a a square. Well, we'll, we'll keep the... Let's keep... Whoa! I was just about to say, yeah. we'll keep the live well, board on it, but what did he just do? Just when we said that... What in the yeah, world did he... I was just about to say, we'll keep the live board on it, and then he makes this... What on earth was this rook takes h5? What is this? I mean, he might still Nobody... be winning, but why give up the bishop? No, but I think I think Black might have just missed a draw with the move rook a8. I, I think he could have taken g2... What? And sacked the rook for a8, and he actually was drawing. Look at the announcer. If he had taken an a8, I'm pretty sure the white yeah. king is just a single step too oh. far away, and he was actually drawing. I think. King takes g2, and a8 rook takes a8. Yeah, it yeah. was a draw. I think. What on earth was this rook takes h5? What in the world is he thinking? And honestly, it started to go wrong when he even played bishop e2. I was, I was critical back here when I said he should have just taken h5 and. Stand by that, but okay, it wasn't a big enough mistake to highlight. But it, he had the he had the wrong plan in his mind on it. Like that, this whole thing that started with Bishop E two, like it was like an early warning sign that he wasn't just taking the simplest road. And yeah. now, now he may have blown it. If King well, if G6, he wanted the pawn, if he wanted the H five pawn, he should have taken it with the bishop. Well, and now, now and... the rook can go back to A eight, 
and and then you're even threatening to take a7. When now when the rook goes to a8 on like king e7, I'll just show everybody, you're just threatening to take it because the king is so far, you can win the g2 pawn and it's going to be a draw. Goodness me. Well, luckily for the dynamite, a draw is still a match. Oh my god, you're right. I, I thought I thought he blew the match too. I, I forgot that is huge right there that a draw still still wins the match for them. So, um a draw wow. is enough, but with a victory, they well, they would have had more points. And anyway, just causing a heart attack to all his teammates, that's a bit of a high price. Yeah. That was uh that was a surprisingly um poor display of technique just for a grandmaster like that. It just it, unnecessary and now it will be a draw and again it, it is a good I guess instructive for all of us to recognize that you can't underestimate this type of ending where your opponent has the ability to give up a rook for a pass pawn and then the question is always can you catch them? And uh we're learning that those those decisions are hard hard to figure out but also just unnecessary risk there for white white could have been taking pawns with the bishop and not gotten here yeah yeah um, totally this has been really strange uh, why he wanted to to convert it this way yeah and it looks like we're just going to see a repetition the king will go back to h2 and if white touches down on d5 or e4 one more time i, I think we've actually had the position three times so we'll, we'll see yeah this um, is the same position okay well wow Wow, and luckily for the Dynamites, a draw is enough for the team yep. victory. For the match <laughs> victory, but... Uh, I won with the white pieces. Yeah, but a half a point that may matter in the end to remind everybody of the format, as Anna was saying earlier, every point matters in the Pro Chess League this year. An exciting new way that we've uh, decided to keep score of things this year. Shout out to Greg Shahadi, who uh, made, that, made that decision. I think it was a great one that... Now, not only do you want to win the match, of course, for the bonus 10 points, but every game, every win you score is part of your total overall standing. And so because the Pro Chess League has two things that happen at the end of the year, only some teams make the playoffs, but also the bottom teams get relegated and they have to requalify their way back in if you're only just now following the league, which is a very exciting thing. It makes so that every match matters. Even if your team isn't having a great season, they still should try their best to play well down the stretch. Um, and again, this should just... Uh, OMG! Oh, oh my god, he just played Rook D8 check! <laughs> what? That what black is... is... Wait, no, he's still what? drawing, maybe? Oh my gosh, if you play Rook A8 now, you would have been losing. Because if Rook A8, King B6, you can't give up the Rook what? anymore because the King can take, and the Rook is guarding the pawn. So now the rook has to go check. Okay, wow. Is black still drawing this even with that horrific blunder? The blunder, everybody, was rook d8 check. In this position, just go back to a8. And now yeah. the king isn't close enough to guard the a7 pawn. But look at this. He, he wants to... He's going to play rook d5. From checks. He'll play king, king, king c7. c7. Rook h7. And, and black rook only has a few d7. seconds. Rook d7 is... Rook d7, he will go back to the back rank. And then Rook... Then, I guess black yeah, is still drawing. Like the pawn on g2. It's still a draw, but... Uh... What? This is just absolutely... <laughs> they're, they're, giving, they're giving me heart attacks now. I'm not even playing. I mean, yeah. I need to check my stress level, by the way. Get those Omega fish oils back in my life. Because that, <laughs> that was a rise in anxiety there, Arn, that I am not very happy with what happened there. Um... <laughs> Too much coffee, not enough omega fish oils. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, okay. Somehow black is still drawing this, but this is bananas. If uh, if you don't understand fully all the X's and O's here, everyone, I'm going to try to check in on it in the analysis board, assuming it ends in a draw. But every time I'm about, I, I've been I've been about to switch the board three times, Anna, and about to say it, and then like a move is played where I it can't go anywhere. Um, let me show everybody on the analysis board why this is a draw, just so they understand that the the main point is that the king can't escape checks, as we saw, and and back in in a position like this where I was first first freaking out, the point was that the reason why it became dangerous is because if black gave a single more check, now the king is close enough where the rook can no longer sacrifice itself, forcing the rook off and drawing because the king can take this pawn, and and both sides will will just have to lose their rooks for past pawns because the king will take. So this was the trick that white had, was getting the king just close enough that he could guard the pawn so that this rook could stay guarding the g2 pawn. But 
even with this blunder rook d8, at the last second, black realizes he can still switch the rook to this side of the board and open a new floodgate of checks that, as we now saw, um, white could not escape until ultimately Grover had to allow the rook to a6. And we are going to see the ultimate draw we talked about, where neither side can do anything but give up their rook for the pass pawn or, or just settle on a whole bunch of checks. So sorry for the yeah. long rant there, Anna. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood why this was a draw, just because I think uh, we take for granted that. But that is probably one of the sloppiest draw games I've ever seen. No, I'm kidding. But that was, that was, uh, that was amazing. Congratulations to the Dynamite who take it barely home. But um, Grover needs to check his... Uh, you know, his stress he level. Uh, he was a piece of the whole yeah. point of this, why we are actually blaming Grover for his not so perfect endgame technique. Right. He was a piece of, and he had an A pass for when all of this started, a completely winning endgame. Yep. And then he ended up giving up the bishop and entering this drawn rook endgame. Luckily for the Dynamite, the draw was enough for the team victory, but this was not their best game. That was not the finest moment of the Indian players. Uh, well said. And uh, now now I'm just sitting here, not sure where to go. We can see on the live board, Abusaturov is taking on Kriakvin in a game that probably should be a draw there with a with some knights and pawns um, and some kings, um, just to name every piece. We've also got <laughs> we've also got Vlad Dubrov under time pressure yet again here as White against Cooper Ardzi. And, Surprising and, under time pressure. Yeah, and lose. I mean, if I have one criticism overall for Debro I mean, the Debrov's. Have we had a single game where he wasn't under massive time pressure compared to his opponent? No, I mean, that's been. No, a... he's always out on the clock. It doesn't matter who is his opponent, what the position right. is. Because and maybe now, he. Black he is. Did. Like Alexander Grishuk, always Black, gets in time trouble. Black is moves away from mating. Rook to c1, followed by bishop f6, I assume. It's the yep, he finds it, and it is over. Uh, Kuparadze has defeated Vlad Dubrov, which, helping the gentlemen, increase their lead. Again, if you're just getting here, the Wizards took a, a, a tie atop the divisional standings with the Mumbai Movers in to the, the round of play today. But um, right now, they look like they're about to go down against Tbilisi. So... Um, the crosstown rival there, Moscow Phoenix. As we see there, the Kriakvin game with Abdusa Turov. I think this one will end in a draw pretty quickly. On a yell at me if you if you decide there's other games worthy of looking at. But I want to look at Andraken's game just to at least touch on it because um, he is he's up a piece, but it's a rook and knight versus rook ending and should be a draw. When I say should be a draw, the only question is will we see will we see a blunder? Well, uh, this is a theoretical draw that has been won with the, the knight and rook by players including Gary Kasparov. That's so right. it is possible it is possible to trick the opponent into a lost position, especially when it's a blitz game. Luckily yep. for Black, he's the one who has five minutes extra on the clock, which is helpful because he yep. will need to calculate the precise defense. Oftentimes there are stalemate positions. And uh, yeah, rook and knight versus rook is a draw. Rook and bishop versus rook still is a draw, but much more likely that you Much more likely up. to get a win, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this this will be a a draw, and I guess that means kind of a a, a mini success for the Phoenix in the sense that Andrekin is the stronger player on paper, but mm -hmm. but also from a match perspective, Volga is in the lead right now, so you can't be too upset if you're the Stormbringers that Andrekin's going to get a draw here. Um, there are now on move 108. What are the other games that are still going in this matchup? But we, we talked about, I guess, so there's just two left here. The other game still going is the one that we were touching on earlier that will likely also yeah. be a draw. So looks like Abdusa Turov and Andrekin are going to dr help draw their way to a Stormbringers victory. Um, These two games and both are at least a draw. So even if Dimitri Andrekin doesn't manage to win the Rook and Knight versus Rook, with a draw and Abdul Satorov's draw, the Stormbringers will win the match. Yep. And he's doing I his think best. The gentlemen are also looking great in terms of team victory. Where Where is but, that? Uh, to, uh, I was looking at the Jobava game. Jobava with the white pieces against Sigurov. Yep. Once again, an exchange down. Wonder if it was a sacrifice or he lost it somewhere in the middle game. Yeah, but, it's not looking but here, Jibaba. here I think Sigorev actually has a decent attack. And if if you're just getting here, Jababa won the first two, but lost the last game to Savchenko, who's played very well today for the Wizards. And this might be what they need to get themselves back in it, because if Sigorev can also 
steal one from the board one from the mm -hmm. from Jablisi, then yeah. maybe that seven and a half, five and a half score is about to change very quickly for us. So so don't go anywhere. Um, officially, just to show it on the analysis board, Abusatorov has drawn his game with Kriakvin. Still no progress being made. We can also see that on the analysis board by Andraken. Um, so we'll just we'll keep an eye on it. If you're looking for well, they these these title players always say that Rook and Knight's an easy draw, but how do I draw it? Well, just take a look at this game, back up and see how uh, Pankratov defended this very nice technique to keep the Rook as far away from the Knight as possible. No forks, no fork emotes for you. And the King, <laughs> you'll notice, just the King only moved when necessary to stay away from the checkmate threats, right? And so the King was just constantly going to awkward squares to prevent coordination. So. Um, I know sometimes comments like, oh, it's a theoretical draw or made, but you don't know how. But this is just a good example if you wanted to go through this game and see how Pankratov drew versus Andraken, you will learn something. So do that. Learn something today. All right, but that means the Stormbringers win the match. Right? With those two draws by Abdusaturov and Andraken. So congratulations to them. Indeed. Congratulations to the Russian team. Uh, the Tbilisi gentlemen are on their way to win the match, but their board one Jababa is in serious danger. So maybe that could be an upset. Maybe, and, even. Well, the other guy who had a tough go of it today was Volkov, but he, maybe he'll end up being a hero in the end here because he did beat Dubrov mm -hmm. in the last battle. And uh, now the board four is in pretty good shape here against Dinara Dordzivia. Um, Black, is, Black is actually doing great here, so... Volkov is kind of finding his stride after a slow start. Hmm. True. Um, that is good news for the TBC gentlemen. So they are likely to win their match, even though their board one is not doing his best today. Because of the way the timing worked out, we didn't get to look at a lot of the games between the Armenian Eagles and the Mumbai Movers, despite previewing that as kind of the biggest biggest hype match of the day because those who follow the league closely know that the Eagles defeated the Movers in the playoffs last year. So maybe we'll spend some time looking at that here toward the end. We've got Magsudlu against Baskaran here. Um, that's Fireheart versus Paramov. Mm -hmm. Magsudlu is a little bit better? Maybe? Maybe? No? Buying it? No? No? Uh uh, let me check the position. Another end game rooks and bishop. Oh wow! Uh, but wait, wait, wait. F five is played, and why can't I just double rooks on the second rank and get nasty? Yeah, rook, I think F five was a huge blunder. Rook B two. I don't understand exactly what. If the what bishop does... moves, it's mate, everybody. Bishop B six and rook H two. Yep. And once again, Bob is not Anna's uncle. So there you go. It's. <laughs> He played bishop d5 check, but after king h8, there's no way to stop bishop b6. King h8. I don't understand this f5 move, because after bishop a5, black clearly wants to double rooks on the second rank, so you got to do something about it. Yeah, bishop a5 was played with this clear threat of opening the seventh rank. White had to play rook b1 would have been a draw. That's a nice way to just simplify. I mean, there were other yeah. moves to play, but he just completely misses the threat. And white's going to get mated on the dark squares here. Again, the point, everybody, is bishop e6 check, king h1, and rook h2 is coming. Okay, why would you walk into f6 check? I'm not sure, but I guess you can play king f8 on the following move, and you're probably still winning as black. Yeah, well, it's impressive that uh, white completely missed the the threat of the double rooks in the second rank. He's the current world junior champion. We keep yep. reminding you that he's also a player of the Teta Steel Chess group today is a rest day here in rest day here in Waikanze and Parham took his chance to debut as the board one of the Armenia Eagles but this game he will not be proud of yeah I mean and this it's huge because the Eagles are up seven five right I mean this is not a wow. this is not a win for Boscaron that doesn't mean anything this this would bring it to seven to six and I think uh you know now Please. now we should naturally check on the other games because where's that going to put us in the match on let's go back to our favorite lady of the day Sargisian she has played very well. Um, right now she is black um, against uh, another female player there. Uh, unfortunately, we don't even... We, uh, we'll, we'll update that to make sure we show her real name next time. But um, there we go. Um, what's going on <laughs> in this board? Yeah, let me catch up with you. I was looking at the scores. 
Yeah, Anna Sergisian has done an amazing job today. So we will definitely see more of her for the Armenia Eagles. And this time facing a board four of the Mumbai Movers, the two female players, Knight takes D5. Wait a second, the last moves were Knight G4, Knight D5, Knight takes D5. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to take back on D5 either with the pawn or the rook. Queen takes D5 takes is unlikely rook. because of the discovered attack. She chose rook takes D5. I wonder if there's something concrete with the knight on g4. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's tricky there. Let's let's the one match that's about to end officially is the Tbilisi gentleman versus the Moscow Wizards. So I'm going to move over there real quick because I think Volkov is about to get a victory as black, sure. and oh. if he does, he will as board four. Uh, clinch the fact that uh, clinch the fact that the gentlemen win today. Um, Dorzevia is making this a little tricky. Denara not going not going quietly, but I think that now if Black can trade rooks, two pass pawns will be too hard to stop. F4, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. And uh, yeah. Okay, you could even play a three. I think just, you know, too many. Okay, this is also nice because if king takes, you have a discovered check with knight d4 and everybody's traded. Um, but now knight e5 check. And uh, again, just nice technique here from Volkov. Um, yes, and if king f5, well, there are a couple of knight moves that are okay. Knight c6 I like because he was opening knight d4 check. Mm -hmm. And after king e5, is it time to... Push the pawns, but the f one is hanging. The, yeah, the you thing. can play knight d4, I guess, and then after the bishop moves, go back to playing f3. All right, f3 works right away. The main point is the white can't take twice because of knight I d4 know, check in the end, and she it. just misses it. That's it. It's That's a blunder. It. She resigns, yeah. and the gentlemen have clinched the match. The now this is this is time for the forky mode. Yep. Okay, back to Sargisian's game. Uh, we can see that uh, the trades happened, and I like her potential for an attack on the king side. You don't like h2 or f2 being under fire. Um, but uh, regardless of the fact... Okay, we got to go back to this game where there was a huge blunder. Wait, how did Magsudlu get out of this? Because now not only did Bhaskaran... Bhaskaran didn't convert, but he's down way on time. So we left this board, but what happened here? We had... Wow. Okay, wait. We had f6, king f8, rook f4. Yes. Bishop check, and then rook f2 check instead of... was. I feel like there had I to have been some that. sort of mate here. It looked like so promising that the attack for black. Why did he go for the rook trade? Is there is there something he was afraid of if he just keeps both rooks? I guess the bishop guards this h1 square, so really, really irritating. You can't just play rook h2 and, and threaten mate, because there is no mate. But um, a, but also his bishop controls the d8 square, so there's no threat of uh, rook a right. on the, the future. So if he has time to push the a pawn, that's also a problem for white. But, you know, I think that king g7 was a bigger mistake than we realized, because... Allowing f6 check gave the rook a extra... Look at this line, Anna. If we go back to move 35, bishop d5, king h8. What yeah. I'm now thinking is that if you play king h8 instead, there's no f6 check, so the rook goes to f4 in the same way. You have yeah. bishop b6 check, king f1, and then g5 is black, forcing the rook off of the f f file. And if the rook goes to f3, well, now rook h2 is devastating because the bishop is blocked from guarding the h1 mate on f3. So yeah, I think I think the win I think the win was King H eight instead of King G seven maybe. Yeah, so not not to allow F six with a check. Yeah, I agree with you. That could have been the the point where he messed it up a little. So the current position between these two is Pro probably should be probably should be a draw here. Um, again, we're covering this game right here between Mog Sudlu and Bhaskaran on the analysis board, the live position, you can see what's going on with Sargisian, who may, she may be close to clinching the match for the Eagles regardless of what happens in this game, because they get one more win, they have eight and a half points. Um, yeah. 
Well, a draw for Parham would be great news for the Eagles. They only need one point overall for this round, the, the final round, to win the match against the Mumbai Movers. Yep. Yeah, so a draw by Parham gets them closer. Just to note, everybody, Zavin Andreasian did already draw his game versus Ganguly. Um, and then we have uh, Bog Bogdasaryan taking on Sadwani. So Sadwani in an interesting position here down the exchange, but perhaps with some compensation. But unfortunately, I think even if Sadwani gets a victory here, it's not going to be enough um, to save the, the mover's day here against the Eagles. So... Yeah, unfortunately for, for the movers, they can't pay back their last season's defeat Let's, against the Armenia Eagles, being yeah. knocked out of the Protest League by the Armenian team. Unfortunately, right? Becoming the becoming their rival there. there there's two yeah, games that are super rivalry. exciting. I know that the match between the Tbilisi gentlemen and the Moscow Wizards is already over, but if we quickly check in on the game between... Uh, Jajka 007 versus Tigra. That's Savchenko versus Jojua. We might have might have some crazy moments here because White is trying to checkmate Black before another Queen comes on the board, and doesn't look like you're going to be able to. Queen comes with check, and that's a problem. That's hmm. a problem. So okay, Savchenko, huge day for the Wizards, but they go down anyway, right? Savchenko beat um, Savchenko so beat Jababa. Yesterday, yes. Um, he's winning. He's going to win here um, against their board two. So Savchenko playing very well today, but unfortunately not enough to save things for the Wizards, despite a, yet another nice win right here, getting them to six and a half points. Speaking yeah. of Bador Jababa, on it looks like he might go down yet again. This rook ending oh. looks very, very dangerous uh, for White. Sigoryev, Sigoryev about to get a, a queen on E1. Yeah, this hasn't been the best day for Badur Jabava. Of course, he's a really strong and dangerous player that can beat anyone in the world. But today, it was more about uh, receiving checkmates or yep. just home from on only one. Well, the scoreboard will be updated soon to show a final of 8.5 to 7.5. So look at that. Every single match right now coming down to a single game, a single point. The gentlemen do move on, but they lose the final two games we cover. And Anna, I mean, it, it's been weird because it, it hasn't it doesn't feel like it's come down to any like winner take all moments but every match has been super close um so true so true sargisian as we say that sargisian does win and put things away for the eagles so they also have mm -hmm. clinched with eight and a half points but what will happen in these other two games will it also be eight and a half seven and a half or or will uh will Magsudlu or bogdasaryan get it get games for the eagles yeah, those are the only two games that are still going on in this match between the Eagles and the Movers. Um, in the game on board one between Max Oglu and Baskaran, first of all, I still can't believe that. that I, I don't know how Black didn't put that away. And I, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be thinking about that one later. Um, yeah. Secondly, the current position should be about equal. There's a pawn, an extra pawn for black. That used to be an extra pawn because after bishop takes g6, yeah. it's not even material up. No more but extra pawns. Even with, even with the pawn up, I thought it was about equal because of the opposite color bishops and they are now trading the rooks. Oh, there's one trick though, because the a2, well, if you take king takes, a2 is a big threat, but c7 comes first that allows the f7 square to be ready for the bishop. So. Yeah, so and they're the they're, le they're letting it peter out right now. Yeah. Oh, people are turning off the lights here in White Luckily, it's about they, to be over in the protest league because they... <laughs> they, they turned off the lights on. on, on, on a, turn the lights back on. <laughs> they're going to lock me like, in. They're going to lock She's still in there. She's still <laughs> in there. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry, Anna. Shout out to Steffi94. Been so helpful. Awesome gold member there in the in the Chess TV chat. But today she says that she actually picked the only board four who didn't get a single point. Not even uh, wow. not even a half point. So Steffi, oh way to pick them, right? Right there with me. So, um, all right. This one's going to be a draw. So the last game that has any sort of fight to it is the one right here between Sadwani and Bogdasaryan. Um 
Uh, I just I, now I'm seriously hope that I won't be logged in. in the building. You're on your you're on your way. You're on your way, uh, Steffi Nine Four to winning that. No, I'm not complaining. I want to stay here till the end of the game, and of course we gotta wrap up the show. But I hope that people are aware that I'm still in the building. I, I'll text I'll text Peter right now if you want me to, because legit I don't want you to get locked in. That doesn't sound but very fun. We knew that I would be here until like 8 p.m. and it's only seven, so I don't know why they are turning off the. You know how it is. Like some guy, you know, he, he's got. He's got something to do tonight, right? Figures there's nobody in here because who would be there alone in an empty chess hall? Clearly, <laughs> right? So there you go. Welcome to Waikansi, by the way. <laughs> Welcome to Waikansi. That's right. Well, I'll text Peter and tell tell him that you're still in there. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also a big shout out to the chat. Uh, hashtag Brianna. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. By the way, Gotham Chess is with us. Levy. Hey, Levy. I also saw Alexandra. Dropping by, she's going to cover the next division together with Aman Hamilton, the chess bra, yeah. Aman. The, and later on, for next week, we are going to have Robert Hess back on the Pro Chess League team as well. He is now traveling to Europe. He's going to cover the second half of the Teta Steel Chess Tournament with my good friend Sofiko Guramishvili. So that's another chess.com coverage that you do not want to miss. Pro Chess League on the three days of Wycombe. And tomorrow we are back with Teta Steel Chess round six yeah very exciting to have robert and sobica working together as well you and lawrence did a fantastic job thank you thank you First, so much but we definitely needed you in the chat just to mock him a little bit just a little bit well anish giri does enough mocking of his own um <laughs> but uh and uh, the, the great thing about what i can say i went outside right before the broadcast of today for five minutes to the supermarket, and I bumped into three top grandmasters. Just hanging out. Michigan, going for a walk, Anish Giri coming yep. back from the supermarket and shopping in the supermarket, Magnus Carlsen. Right. So that, there was, you go. that was my company in five minutes. Five minutes spent in Waikanze outside the building. Yep. That's awesome. Well, uh, Looks like we have only one game left, as you just shouted out. Don't go anywhere right after this. I'm on Hamilton, and Alexander Botez will have the call. Let me remind everybody as well that there are other events going on throughout the entire week during the Pro Chess League. We also have coverage on the rest days. We call it the halfway highlights, uh, hosted consistently by International Master Levy Rosman, as well as Wouter Bick, two very known faces to the Twitch streaming community. We had David Pruis, uh, B. Levy's special guest yesterday, and uh, make sure you also look for David Pruis's content. We'll have a uh, we'll have an image for that shortly. David has been rocking some awesome lectures and videos with lots of instructive content. I see him in the Chess TV chat right now, uh, spying his next his next targets for some awesome videos. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on all kinds of social media, and uh, there you go. And Anna, we've We've, uh, you're locked in. You're locked in the, uh, <laughs> the, the Tata Steel studio, and you'll see what that looks like on the, on the Twitch stream here in just a second. So shout out to Arn, our producer, oh one my. more time. <laughs> shout out to Arn, our producer, one more time. Go ahead, Arn. Throw yourself up there. I need to get out. I need to get out. Thank you, Arn. Working so hard. There he is. That's the guy. <laughs> That's the guy. Pop Contrary to popular belief, MVL does not push the buttons. It's Aaron behind the desk. So, <laughs> all right. I love Studio C. You guys gotta follow and subscribe to Studio Chess on Twitch. I'm gonna do that right after the stream. I didn't know that you had this hidden camera. It's really like a reality show. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, looks like we've added some. Did we add some Aaron emo? We did. We have a producer emo now. So Yay! the guy, the, the guy behind emo. the scenes, pulling the strings, pushing the buttons, whatever that means. I don't even know that I'm rhyming. Somehow I am four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, forty-two. I don't know, right? I mean, okay. <laughs> free, free John Locke. We're gonna sign off. Anna, this has been wonderful. Great to have you back. Uh, and uh, thank you for all the coverage you're doing for chess.com around the world. Like I said, I wasn't joking, everyone, when I said she's probably the most famous chess commentator on the planet right now. Go subscribe and follow her channel on Twitch. She just got done doing world championship coverage with Judah Polgar, and we're happy to have her both Tata Steel for chess.com and with the Pro Chess League. So, Anna. Thank you so much, Danny. You are way too kind. And of course, you guys should subscribe to Danny's channel because he's going to be streaming tomorrow, as far as I know. If I and... don't now, BJH is going to kill me. Like, I have to do it because <laughs> I already promised. So, like, my wife was like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Should we go? Because we were, we're going to take our family road. She was actually asking me to reschedule. And you know what I told her? 
I said BJH oh, well, comes right. first. Shauna. I'm not logged in. Then I'm not logged in. Thank you so much for your for your SMS, Danny. People. I texted <laughs> Peter and he got back. Yeah, oh, I, I can't. I'm still, here. I'm still alive. <laughs> I can't show what Peter said on can't. An explicitive. I said. I said, Peter. They turn off the lights on Anna. He responds with an explicitive. I will call the owner right now. Let me know when oh. it's fixed. It's fixed. So look at that. Texting Peter pays off. And just don't look at the words right there that he has on. <laughs> <laughs> you know those Dutch guys. They've got potty mouths from time to time. All right. Well, anyway, Anna. Thank you so much. Go enjoy your evening there in. Uh, and Y can see, and we will see you again very soon for Pro Chess League coverage. Everybody stick around and check out Amon and Alexander Botez in just a few moments. Indeed. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in and stay here for the highlight show and Alexandra and Amon covering the next division.